Hey guys, welcome back. We watch a movie. I'm Mike. I am Maximus Dickimus. <laughs> ready to dick down tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you, sexy fucks. Bend over. <laughs> Everyone. I mean that not figuratively or literally. I mean, it is figuratively. Nice to Fingers. see you. Because I can't see you, dummy. You yeah. stupid idiot. You guys can make whatever faces you want to make because we can't see you because the lights aren't on the crowd. The lights are on us because you're dark. And I don't mean rage. I, <laughs> the tonight, Jada Pinkett Smith thing will never go away. <laughs> <laughs> tonight, we have a fun fucking show. I'm excited about tonight, man. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm more excited than I was when KFC brought back the double double dick down. Oh, yeah. Uh, and by that, I mean this these two dudes who work at KFC that totally... <laughs> Well, it's not actually it's three guys. It's Kyle, Frank, and Charlie. You just call them KFC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's three That's... dudes. Mike has an orgy thing with these three guys that he calls KFC, and they dick him down every Saturday night. It's crazy. I was there. I recorded it. Yeah, and I and then I joined them. in with the fun. Yeah, I can take them all three at once. That's why I tried to prove it was you. I was like, I was like God stuff. damn! If only America's Got Talent would allow you on there. I know, right? <laughs> I know. Oh Jesus, Lord Almighty, we're going straight to hell yeah. without a hand basket. That's the saying, right? Without a oh, hand break. Not well, go ahead and say what the show's about before because I don't want to like we already randomly talk about sucking oh, dick and everything else. I just I just did. It's 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 about our, our special guests tonight are gonna be Kyle, Charlie, and, and Frank. That's, <laughs> gonna, that's a great show yeah, right there. I'm gonna Appreciate show you guys my biggest talent. Uh no, yeah. it's uh so tonight it's 80s versus 90s. Check this out right here. So I got a whole I got 27 of these, 27 of these all revved up and ready to go. And then let me show you this to you guys because it's going to be really cool. You're going to feel it in your naughty parts. Do you have the ticker thing? Uh, yeah, I got that too. So here's what it looks like. And mm. I put a bunch of random stuff together, a lot of horror in there. It's horror centric, but other stuff as well. We got toys, we got uh, a music one, we got movies, and we're going to keep tally. And this, I mean, you can't get two decades worth of stuff done in one show. So this will be a recurring theme on the show. Yeah. And then whatever Jay and I obviously get stuck on, or if we got a tight one, <laughs> then uh, then we'll have you guys vote on it. It's going to be so fun. You know, I, the, um, a tight one, which no one ever says after they do five years in prison. No one ever says um, that about their me. Their butthole is no longer tight. <laughs> I like the 80s um, logo better. I don't know why. It just my eye is drawn to it. It's just the pink, the pinkness yeah. of it. See, the background is the oh no, I can't move the that's right. This is not editable. Bitch in 80s, radical 90s. Find out tonight who's gonna come out on top. Eerie Indiana. Boy, <laughs> so, it's, so like, it goes. it's like uh, that that what was it? Uh, not pop-up video. Uh, I love the I love the 90s. <laughs> it was like, because it, the transition would be like boss, and then they would talk like I was like, shit, dude. I wish we had done like Shit like that. Like, I love the 80s, and you just talk, like, each year. God, that would have been fucking awesome. Yeah, we were going to do pop-up video on our reviews and, like, have this little thing go, and, like, do work. movie okay. fact. But, yeah, then I got tired. <laughs> I, ate some, I ate too much talking yeah, about it. We were, like, fucking uh, idle hands. It's like, well, we saw this really awesome light, and there was all these hot <laughs> chicks singing, and we were like, fuck that. That's too far. So we just stayed. <laughs> oh, but, uh, the, the, yeah, but that looks good. I, I mean, and that's a hard one right there. If that's the first one we're starting off with, we're firing yeah. with both guns. It's going to get naughty. I got two guns, one for each of you. Naughty. Uh, uh, but what I was going to say was, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I recently got the – I'm gay. Uh, yeah, and Dick's – uh, I got a, I got a big poster of a dick that I just look at every day and it's big mm. veiny cock and I just want to stick it in my ear and my mouth. Yeah. I want to hear it come. It. Scratch and sniff. It it's a lot detailed information. But anyhow, I got the really? original Star Wars posters. They're like cheap. I got them for like 12 bucks and they're like good size. I think they're like 24 by 36 for like 12 bucks. It was a good deal. But the original Return of the Jedi, I'm looking at it right now. It's He's got a blue lightsaber and I think Vinny C might have told me this or I just forgot it. Um, the, re the crazy thing is, you know, in the Return of the Jedi, he uses a green lightsaber, but on the poster, he's using a blue lightsaber. That's the actual, po he's got a blue lightsaber. The reason for that is originally he was going to have a blue lightsaber. Mark Hamill was going to have a blue lightsaber. The reason why they switched it to green was because when Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker was fighting Jabba uh, on the cell barge on Tatooine and it was in the desert, the way the, the camera was shot, the blue light looked like shit. It was washed out on the sun. So they or they or that the way they did the effects, it wasn't going to look good. It was going to be too washed out. So they changed it to green so it would pop more in the desert. That's why it's green. 
So is that like a rare one, or is there? There's actually not. Oh, it's not on the poster, anyways. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, no, the gone. original poster of Return. Of, it's not like mm, this is. These are reprints, but no, it's not like it's going to be worth any money. But the original oh, poster, when Return of the Jedi was a blue lightsaber. I never that's noticed fun. when I was a kid. I just never thought about it. But yeah, that's why because the, the poster's already been printed, and George Lucas like it's just the fucking color. Who cares? I'll just make yeah. up the green one. Yeah, I'll just go back and post and change all my movies and make them shitty. <laughs> Yeah, that was <laughs> no one will terrible. mind. I always felt totally bad for David Prowse, too. Like how he took him out in the special editions at the very end when he's like a force ghost and it's Aiden Christensen and yeah. a shitty wooden acting instead of David Prowse. I mean, David Prowse already got fucked once. He thought he literally delivered his lines as Darth Vader. He was walking around sounding like shit in that mask, de delivering all the lines. He memorized his script and just to find out when the movie came out. Oh, yeah, they just used James Earl Jones and recorded over your voice. <laughs> Hollywood's it's a dangerous like, business. I was like, oh, because he sounded like he sounded like Bane, but Bane sounded more clear than him. <laughs> yeah, dude, that did not sound good. No. Uh Sean Tubby123, not three, four, five, says number one, sup close six. Number two, summer school is done. So let's party, motherfuckers. Get giggle bush and pizza. Number three, Mike, can I get a Robert Y? Jay is an older sexy football coach. All righty, let me give you a speech about. <laughs> X's and O's. I don't you know. do kind of look like an offensive coordinator. Just the the the, the whole thing and not like in a bad way. By no, the way, I, need, I need a clipboard. If I had a clipboard, I'd be doing it right now. No, well, you know that like when they flash to him in the booth and they're sitting there like oh, just and they got like 17 diet cokes around them and they're like trying actually, to figure out the thing. I, I look like a, if I was an offensive coordinator, it's like I couldn't hack it in fucking college and I I was a third <laughs> stringer in the NFL. So I was like, I'll fucking those that can't do. T. <laughs> uh yeah it's tim couch yeah the tim couch look uh by the way your light looks did you get a new light the lighting looks supreme. no it's just where it's really sunny here uh okay and a chicken supreme uh anyways uh, robert why i don't what is that from because i'm just saying it i don't know what i'm actually supposed to be saying I, robert I why i thought you knew no, i didn't i, just I thought you it. knew you were lying I think asshole. It, like poor, my wife does in bed every night we're sean over there Thinking you right, know Sean. what he means. I'm sorry, baby. I'll make it. I can make it cool again. <laughs> Scramby eggs. Uh, Greg Harris, what's up, dude? I haven't seen that sexy mm. fucking mug in a while. Says, sup, dudes. Just got out a couple days. Got out of jail a couple days ago. Served ten days in the worst jail in Tennessee. I'm now scared straight, never going back. Stoked about Scarefest this year. This year, the lineup is insane. Love you guys. Hey, Greg. damn, Greg. Now you're now, guys. Take this as a note. That's how you start an intro with your super chat. Hey, guys. <laughs> hope all is well. I just did time. It was a holy fucking shit experience. Oh, eye opening, even. Hope it's going to be a good year this year because I can't wait to see it at Scarefest. Fuck yeah. <laughs> There's so many questions. It was like giving you a teaser. It's like the author of a book and he's only reading the back of the novel to you. And he wants you to buy the whole book. <laughs> it's like he just gives you the, 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 exactly. preface, the preface. And I'm like, God damn it. Now, Greg is a master, master in doing that. I mean, he's just shown the example. But that sucks, dude. I'm not going to ask you what you did. Probably just being too hot and walking down the sidewalk with a beer in your hand. Am I right? It's in his the, the, the full story is in his OnlyFans. You got to click on this link yeah. and go to the Holy OnlyFans. Shit, man. I'm glad you're yeah. out, but yeah, dude, I could do tales. ten minutes in jail, let alone ten days. Holy shit! I've been there, not for ten days though, man. I've been there for one night. Did one you night feel only. when you came out, Greg? Did you feel like the fucking dude, the the, uh, the mayhem guy from Oz? Did you feel like Oz? <laughs> like you come out, you're like I'm a different guy. Like you see the sun, and you're like I might just take over them streets. What's up, big perm, big worm? <laughs> yeah. Uh, shit, dude. Uh, I hope I hope everything's okay. I hope it wasn't for anything too serious. Uh, maybe you just got caught with some cocaine or something. <laughs> I don't know. Was he in the uh, White House today? <laughs> the West Wing. I heard about that. Shit. Hanging out with old Hunter. What are you doing? Hey, glad it, glad you're out. Glad it's over for you. And uh, I mean, it's, you know, Greg's a good dude. So don't worry, guys. I'm sure he didn't like push an old lady down an escalator or anything. But if he did, it was <laughs> justified. The bitch shouldn't gotten his way. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been standing there. <laughs> oh, love you, Greg. Uh, Jagerbomb, what's up, man? Says, I need redemption, redemption from the last time we did 80s versus 90s because I came in at the end of the stream and Jay yelled at me. <laughs> well, that, that, that checks out. I remember that evening. No, uh, well, I don't. Well, I'm the offensive coordinator, so get the fuck back to training <laughs> camp, you stormy bitch. You're, 89. Not, you're, not, you're not qualified. 89 Batman versus the Crow. That's not one that I have in here, but I would say, oh, fuck, that's tough. What the crow versus Batman eighty nine? Yeah, I I'm think I gotta go Batman. Batman. Well, listen, I gotta give it to the crow because Michael Keaton did too. We never got to see the gr the great legendary Brandon Lee ever follow yeah. that up. That was a oh, uh, a masterpiece in every That's sense of the word. There are problems with the eighty nine Batman. Don't get me wrong; it's not a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination. While we do love it because we grew up with it, 
nostalgia reasons. There are problems with it. For me, though, The Crow, I think it's a masterpiece, dude. I think the only thing that was really wrong with it was that we were robbed from the, the actual full-on fight sequence that we were going to get with Brandon Lee, and unfortunately, he died before we could get it, so they used CGI. Yeah, you can definitely sense some some editing stuff in there for sure. But I, yeah, there's no there's no wrong answer with that. Actually, I'll put that in the poll here to see what you guys think. I'd like to, I'm interested. Well, to see God damn it, point. then I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> no, I should have just yelled at Jaeger bomb, had a Jaeger bomb, and then moved on with the question. <laughs> or moved on with the night. Uh, the I gotta put eighty nine in there. Duh. Stupid idiot. God, I'm so stupid. I hate myself and my feet smell. Well, funny. I'm sorry, Jager Bomb. Uh, if I yelled at you, if I gotta write one more goddamn apology, anything, I'm gonna shit a fucking brick. That's why I'm you gonna, don't show up I'm late. Just gonna, I'm just gonna tell you straight up, Jager. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Jager. Oh, uh, Christopher Sampson, fly me to the moon like that bitch, Alex Cramp. I hope you know what that's from. Like it's from Half Baked. If you don't he knows know what that's from. Uh, how how y'all's fourth? My I was in a meeting today and about last month's TPS reports. I couldn't help but think about well, ranking directors' <laughs> breakthrough movies. Uh, I I then thought how to do those movies uh, or how to how how do those movies rank against the director's magnum opus? That's dude, that's a really good question actually. Like, yeah, that's good. yeah. Um, well, thank you, man. I hope it's going well for you. That's awesome, Chris. Uh, fourth was all right. I didn't do do any celebrations or anything like that. Um, uh got dogs that were shaking like leaves and shit and then and one pooped in the house because the fucking goddamn fireworks scared the shit out of them literally uh and then you know got drunk watched a bunch of scary not scary just sad shit and went to bed it's a good time oh, usually have a regular but i don't know uh i couldn't help but think about ranking directors breakthrough movies that, that would be a really good video that's awesome dude you've got some great fucking ideas chris i actually yeah. i'm gonna have to stop encouraging because i don't want another competitor in this sphere like, I can't even just start making videos and then fucking putting ours to shame. <laughs> it's not hard to do. It's I know. Not it's really do. Not. As some people who come up. on the show have told us before, they're like, we were like, I mean, if these idiots can do it, we can do it. We're like, yeah, it's true. I'm not <laughs> dropping names. Or like that. <laughs> I'm not offended at all, Jim. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, dude, that's a really cool idea. I immediately, for some reason, my brain goes straight to Christopher Nolan. His breakthrough obviously would have been what Batman Begins. Like, I know following, or not following, but Memento was, I get, like, but his breakthrough, as far as like getting big, would have been the Dark Knight, right? And then his ma magnum opus, I would say, is probably, in his opinion, it's probably something else. But I'd have to, it's also Dark Knight, which yeah, well, rises. I, no, I dark, if I, dark Knight. If I had to put it right away, for me, it would be, um, I, I yeah, because it it's harder to say, but James Cameron's T2. Some would say the Terminator, some would say the Abyss, but I feel like T2 really launched James Cameron, name. like that, that's like, like his name was then just like solidified in Hollywood gold. And again, that's also his magnum opus, I would say, in my opinion. I don't think it gets better than that for anybody. Well, he has you like know? three so, movies in the top, like that in the top five that have a billion well, dollars. That's true. There's Titanic, and then there's and I mean, but for me, his his his, his would be yeah, T2, that guy, but, yeah, fucking legend. I don't know. We that's should make good, Christopher Nolan. Nolan. We should make Christopher Nolan and James Cameron fight just in a cage match, Mike like uh, Elon. Like Elon. Yeah, in yeah. Uh hey, love you, Chris. Thank you, dude. Uh I, yeah, fourth was fourth spot, man. Watched the fireworks with the kids. Um uh drank a little bit uh my dog bit my neighbor uh not on purpose the dogs were fighting and she sh should have been standing there <laughs> once <for> again <laughs> so that sucked that part so that was a downer but other than that it was all good man um dan murphy said love jay's look he seems like he would be watching halloween on dtu's co couch and scream d2s d2 dtu Stu oh fuck me in the mouth uh uh hey dr loomis was that you doing some yayo at the white house <laughs> No, no, I, I don't do, I don't shove white shit up my nose. I'm not Joe Biden. If I was, then I would do it. I don't do it. I mean, I handle my anxiety fine. I deal with Michael. I don't need cocaine. I have a constant high. I don't need to shove white powdery shit in my nose to maybe go zoom, zoom around the block. But for him, maybe to find his way to the bathroom, he does a little zoom, zoom. Get him going. Anyway, no, it wasn't me. Okay, you asshole. I've never been to the White House. Of course, they wouldn't let me go to the White House because if they did, I'd say, I need some more goddamn money. Find Michael. Give us some more money. Oh no, I know. Get your son out of jail. I get you. Okay, IRS. Do it. Do it. Joe Biden would have been like, now here's the deal. I don't want any of that zoom zoom. All right. He'd be like, come on, man. Shut up. Come on, man. <laughs> oh shit, potatoes. All right. Let's oh, by the way, you mentioned it. I fucking totally forgot to do it. Dun dun dun. Ah, there it is. There we There's that disgusting piece of shit. Let's do it. Let's get inside of it. And back inside of you guys in just one moment. But first, inside of each other, while you watch. 
That sounds good. That's what you're all here for, perverts. <laughs> we know what's we know what the truth is. Um, <laughs> you sound like like you do. You're bordering on Tobin Bell. We know what the truth is. <laughs> <laughs> I smoked too many cigarettes last night, so my shit's oh. like Yeah, it'll get you. It'll get you. Um, all right, so here's the deal: 80s versus 90s. Uh, 80s on the left, 90s on the right. First one, it's a fucking toughie. Not for me, not for me because I'm not the biggest indie guy. I like him just fine, but uh, Tombstone all day and twice on Sunday for me. Skin it, skin that smoke wagon. You're damn right. You're scared. I can see that in your eyes. <laughs> I am. Uh, uh, yeah, dude. It's Tombstone. I would. Um, I love Indiana Jones, dude. I, I do. But Raiders of the Lost Ark, while it did launch the, the legend that is uh, Indy, it never really was my favorite. Well, don't get me wrong. I think the best Indiana Jones is Last Crusade. I think that's the definitive Indiana Jones movie and experience. But Raiders of the Lost Ark would be close behind it. But, dude, there's something about Tombstone. I think, dude, it's to me, it's it's like, it's it's the perfect Western. It's perfectly cast. It's badass in every sense of the word. It's quotable as fuck. It's got, like, dude, holy shit, dude. There's just too much sexy wrapped up in that fucker. All right. Yeah. That's like, yeah. you know, if you just got lucky and you're getting ready to have sex with a hot ass fucking porn star that's ready to wrap your dick around her like a like a boa and wear it around the the, the house and just do all sorts of crazy boiled up buttery like a, things to your like a dick nipples robe. and butt and your Snake balls. Skin dick robe. I mean, it's just like fuck, dude. I didn't expect this on a Tinder date. Anyway, it's Tombstone and he took me to dude. Taco Bell. Yeah, it's Shit. Tombstone. <laughs> it's Tombstone for me too. Uh, easy one. I, I'm seeing a lot of looking at the crowd as far as what you guys are saying. I'm seeing a lot of Tombstone, a lot of Raiders as well, a lot, a lot of Raiders as well. Uh, but uh, you know, it's just because y'all are lying just because Indy's popular right now. That's you're just trying to be cool. You're trying popular, to be popular, cool like bad because I heard his fucking getting torn apart by the critics. It's not doing great. No, it's not doing great at all. Uh, all right, that's one down for 80s. No, excuse me, fucking 90s. 90s is winning one to nothing so far. And let's check on the El Votoracaco. Um, Batman 89 wins over the crow 53 to 47%. But oh, so close. Try to shoot me in the back. Eh? <laughs> um, so two. Uh, no, that's Batman. So one and one. So we got one for the 80s. We got one for the 90s. We're going to keep an ever growing score forever and always. And when we run out of ideas eventually, then, then we'll have a winner. But uh, here's one for you. This is a little bit of a deep cut. On, on the left side for some of you guys i know but um best of the best there is no choice this, versus mortal Kombat. this is this is ridiculous this is like this is like putting mike tyson against really anybody early on in his career <laughs> <laughs> it, it's best of the best all day long i mean holy shit dude what an inspiration like it's one of my favorite karate action movies of all time it really is it's got a great story uh it's got an uplifting ending it's great to save a life in defeat <laughs> is to get out of full use. I mean, dude, it's like it makes me cry every time. Like, I could fast forward to the end of that movie and fucking cry with Dayhan and the whole thing. I mean, the whole thing is great. It's a it's, Mortal Kombat was a great movie. It was a great, let's be honest, it was a decent attempt at telling a great movie. That movie was hard to make. Mortal Kombat was, I, and, and I got to give it credit to the to the director of that film, he did the best he could. It actually wasn't too bad. But, I mean, it was almost an impossible task, especially it being a 90s movie based on a video game where nobody gave a shit. Yeah, it's best of the best, dude. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, I'm going to go Mortal Kombat on this one, but it's not because you're wrong, because best of the best is 1,000% a better I feel movie. like James Earl Jones in best of the best was like, no, Tommy, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I, I need to watch it again. It's been a minute, but best of the best is definitely a better movie, no doubt about it. Uh, love that growing up as a kid. Jay and I ate up karate movies like they were fucking candy, and, and we were fat. Uh, oh. So it actually, there's not even a joke there. We were just fat kids eating candy. But no, Mortal Kombat. It's just too nostalgic for me, man. Because if I'm looking at these, like if I had to delete one from history, I don't think I could. I don't think I could take out Mortal Kombat. Just too many, too many times in the garage that we put on that beam, boom box with that. Because um, yeah, I had Mortal Kombat uh, the movie album, then I had Mortal Kombat the album, and it was yeah. by the Immortals. By the way, the best scene in Mortal Kombat was when Reptile comes out and he goes Reptile because yeah, I didn't see him the whole fucking movie except when he was that shitty CG thing running around and then when Luke Kang throws him into that fucking statue and he pops up and he's actually Reptile and then you hear the voice go Reptile 
I'm like, God damn it! And he goes, <laughs> you hear that fucking music? And he goes, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> They were doing superhero shit before superhero shit. Yeah, was like, on your shit. left. Reptile. Uh, but yeah, so just for nostalgia reasons, I'll do that. So we'll see what the vote is on that before we actually put it down. Um, uh, now, here's a horror one for your biscuit baskets. It's a tough one. It really is a tough one. Originals, fr- original 1980, Fright Night versus From Dusk Till Dawn of the 90s. Where do you want to put it, son? Where do you want to put it? You put it I want you mouth? to be cool. Everyone be cool. <laughs> Uh, hard drinkers, I'm, dude. Hard. I gotta go with the dust till dawn. I got to. I mean, I know that Friday, Friday nights. I mean, it's its own legend, for, and it has every right to be. But dude, dust till dawn brought the sexy like edge to a vampire. It was so desperate to have it. Like, dude, to me, dust till dawn is as unique as Friday night. But dust till dawn has got just something about it that's like cool. I don't know. Like, there's just an edge to it that Friday night just doesn't have. I'm not saying Friday night doesn't have its ups. For sure, it does. I mean, and I would. Totally agree with anybody that said it was better than Dust Till Dawn. But, dude, something about George Clooney in that movie with that fucking tribal tattoo, the desert heat, the hot fucking sexiness of Selma Hayek in the strip, strip bar. God damn. With the boa constrictor going down those thick-ass fucking sexy-ass thigh legs. God. <laughs> and then you got the, you know, you got fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, his brothers. Um, what the fuck was it? Quentin Tarantino. Who's awesome as that snaky ass fucking brother that he is, Robert Rodriguez? Dude, what a great movie! I mean, it's just it's a can of whoop ass and sex in one movie, and you can't go wrong with it. Yeah, I'm gonna say Dust Till Dawn as well. Look, Fright Night could be a better movie for sure, uh, but I feel like there's a lot of not a lot, but there are other movies that that give you the same feel as Fright Night. I don't think there's a movie like Dust Till Dawn on planet Earth. It's just so weird and strange and cool and like George Clooney in like a, a pulp like role like this you know like doing just wacky shit and i just yeah there's just no movie in the world like dust from dust till dawn for me you can name a couple other robert rodriguez movies and shit like that but just, it's just not the same that movie is just it's too much it's too strong i can't hold it back so uh yeah another one for the 90s uh excuse me there's a lot of fucking vampire stuff to go into too but i, I did do a couple of them yeah I think Fright Night might actually be on here again, but we've done so many vampire verses, I didn't want to do that one. But um, let's go to the... uh, Oh, fuck, Ah. dude. This is a tough one right here, son. Now we're getting into toys. These are toys. Toys. I I don't think it's tough for me, dude. I I think it's 90s X-Men. I'm surprised to hear you say that. No, because I'm not saying that the Star Wars toys weren't cool. I didn't grow up with the Star Wars toys in the 80s. The thing about them is they're not... Listen... I mean, neither are the X-Men of the 90s, the cartoon, but they were, I feel like the color, the variety, the pop of the X-Men toys back in the 90s is just something, there's something more appealing to it to me. Um, and plus, I did grow up in the 90s, uh, much more so than the 80s. Even though I was born in 84, I grew up in the 90s. Um, so they have more of a nostalgic feel to me. There's something about the Star Wars, the original Star Wars toys that came out, though, like uh, when they first released. They just kind of look dinky. I don't know. I mean, they're worth a lot of money now, but they kind of look like dinky. They kind of look like they didn't really, they mass produced something really fucking quick and put it out. I don't know. I'm not saying that the X-Men toys were any different. I mean, obviously, they were just trying to get like dumb shit eight-year-olds to buy their products and beg their poor mother that probably is sucking three (laughs) dicks at a row just to pay the bills to go out and buy this worthless ass toy. But, uh, you know, they. I just feel like they did a better job. And they look, they got the spring out fucking slashing claws on the wolverine <laughs> like they got like things it does like the best you're gonna get on the old ass 80s star wars toys like maybe maybe boba fett shoots a missile and that's it <laughs> and then if you lose it it's over dude i'm a thousand percent in agreement with you on that one the fucking uh like well hey you knew that was gonna be because i've never been a star wars guy but i always did love the nostalgia of those star wars i remember one year uh for my birthday uh, my parents were like, we don't actually give a shit to go out and buy you presents, but here's a hundred dollars. We'll take you to Walmart. And you can yeah. pick some shit out. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. And I wasn't even into it, but like, I thought that they looked so cool. I just, I spent the whole wad on those. Ni- these no, are the yeah, you're Star talking Wars about, toys. you're talking about the, the night when they yeah. really, those were actually okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they had the holographic thing yeah. on the back and all that shit like that. But this is, I mean, it's basically the same idea of just updated, but uh yeah i was shocked i actually thought that you would go with star wars and i th- the thing about the x-men ones is that like 
if you find one that's not popular, if it's not Wolverine or it's not Cyclops, like if it was Beast or some shit, like you can find these in like flea markets and shit now, still in the package for like five or six bucks, which is nice. But when you zoom in, when you look at these things, they are so shitty and ugly. Like the mouth yeah, they're, is just they're like not good. Uh, I thought, but as I thought, kids, dude, I, I, we went crazy well, for those things. I had the black wing. I mean, don't get don't talk about black too much, Michael. Get excited. <laughs> but uh <laughs> But I had I had the black wing, but I think, lost Jada Pinkett's not driving. Yeah, I think uh, I, I do think that the Cyclops, um, the, the the Cyclops figure was awesome because you could push a button on his back and his his visor would light up, and yeah. that costume has always been killer. Like the costume that Cyclops has in this one, I think it was Jim Lee that did the uh, the the covers and and the and the the way they look in the nineties. I don't know, I could be wrong, but it looks great, dude. Yeah, it's it's them all day long. Yeah, yeah, dude, and I, I, I'm so nostalgic for the colors of it because it was also there was the TV show too, and then there was the comic books. the The '90s X Men comic book covers, I think, are the best comic book covers in the history of comics. Like I, and like just the colors, I, no, nothing looks brighter and more vibrant than fucking '90s X Men colors. I don't know how they did it, and it's got the card that comes with it too. Yeah, um, fucking, I love those toys, man. I really, if I had a bigger house, I would dedicate like an entire wall, and I would just fill up every square with those like old school cheap KB toys ones, like this, or toy biz. Sorry, just all on the wall. But I remember throwing a fit, dude, in the mall. Like I wanted that Wolverine so fucking bad, and like I got in trouble, and then I was crying, and I'll never forget my mom taking my hand and walking my ass. I was like young as shit, and she's like, "See the toy store? See there? Say bye to it. There it goes, because you're not fucking going in there." I'm and like, then he heard Wolverine in his voice. Said, Sorry, bub. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted you to have the toy. Listen to your mom. Grow Not strong. today. By the way, I was going to tell you another random thing. I don't know why. When I was talking like that, I thought of... I watched the American Gladiator unofficial documentary. Fucking awesome, man. I No, I binged it. I, yeah, all five episodes. It was actually I watched really, it all one day, too. It was fucking awesome. Yeah, it was really good. If you guys have, don't know about it, they made an unofficial uh, American Gladiators documentary. I know this is random as fuck. I just now thought of it, though. On Netflix. Really good. And I also started watching the Arnold documentary so so far so good dude i have seen those are i've seen both of those and i totally agree like both both of them are fucking awesome they're both like one marl's three episodes i think american yeah, they're like five a, episodes. Four, an hour each yeah but they talk about like like all the like the the fucking that was going on and like the bosses and how that yeah the dude. were fucking each other and fucking i like the american wild. gladiators but I, I like to do there's something about the arnold documentary the candor of that guy and i like that they they talk to me like this one guy was like arnold is the most calculating man i've ever met in my life and i was like i totally believe it and yeah he, and he, he's being straight up honest when his brother and his dad died he's like i insulated myself nothing affects me you like we yeah. have gold Nothing affects you. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn. I mean, I, I know it's like you got you anyway. It's great. We it should was, get back was, to the, on topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. You guys know what to expect, Danny and the biscuit dwellers. Um hey, look at that girl on the left of your screen. That's what is she holding? Hot, it looks like a hot dog, but it's not. Like if you zoom no, into it's it, a, it's, it's like a, a burrito. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just pretend it's a dick and I get turned yeah. on and I have to go to the bathroom for five to seventeen seconds. But um and as far as Mortal Kombat, dude, I'm, my brain is dead today. Sorry, guys. I'm just not. I'm not. I'm not fucking sharp. I'm not. Salt God peanuts, damn it! How can you one time peanuts. fucking kick it? Um, Mortal Kombat wins over Best of the Best, 79, 20, 21 percent. A lot of people probably just haven't seen Best of the Best. You got to get on. What the show, fuck? Guys. Wait a minute. What was that score? Uh, seventy nine to or seventy eight to twenty one percent. I want all of you to leave now. <laughs> You leave and you come back later when you find a fucking brain that you dropped on the fucking floor. What the goddamn is going on with America? We just had a fucking Independence Day yesterday. And you motherfuckers coming in here with your socialist attitudes, picking a <laughs> shitty fucking movie. What the fuck, dude? No, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. But I guarantee you, I, I agree. I don't think many people have seen Best of the Best. Yeah, I didn't really have a chance on that one. Uh, uh, I well, was, I think I was... it did. I thought it did. I, I just, I, I, I thought more people had seen it. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. I don't, I don't think a lot of people saw it, uh, dude. I want to point this out real quick though, as we were talking about. I lost it, but uh, where where was it, what you said? Uh, Holly's fucking mom was a manager at a KB Toys when she was a kid. Do you know how badass that would be, dude? She got every fucking toy, probably had first dibs on it. Her mom probably like, mom, like you're there, like bring me the fucking X jet. <laughs> When you get home, like you're already fucking there, just bring it black home. What's the Mike, problem? You can say the word black. It's okay. <laughs> is it black jet? It's not black jet. X black X. I thought What's it was it called, called? black wing, or maybe it's the black, the black jet. Wing. I don't know. Maybe the you Quinjet. No, that's fake. I don't fucking know. 
either way yeah um that would be dope shit i wish man like, why don't they just wish. call it the x-jet <laughs> like, yeah why do we gotta throw any kind of thing like just call it the x-jet who also cares? why is it x-men there's women on there too we should call oh it oh my x god person. please <laughs> take it fall off a cliff <laughs> uh let's just call them the mutants oh man oh 90s is kicking ass right now by the way it's up four to one you sluts you fucking perverts um 80s versus 90s et versus independence day <clears throat> Ooh. Well, and your oh. father comes home from work oh. early with satchel pages do, do, do you want some Reese pieces or do you want that piece of shit will smith there? what do you want <laughs> what do you want sir? how you like your how you like your candy bar you piece of shit. Uh, I mean, listen, all right, this is going to be weird, but dude, I never was that attached to E.T. I never was. I mean, I know it's a classic. I know it's awesome. I know it broke, like, boundaries as far as, like, filmmaking history. I know it was all these words that I don't know how to express because my brain is too little. And I know that people said it way better than me. I get Yeah, it, but man. you got a big dick. Yeah, man, it's so big. He says sarcastically out loud. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, it's all like, yeah, I understand. But it's like E.T. has got its own, like, whatever. But, dude, I got to pick Independence Day in this in this situation, okay? I have to. I, I mean, you got Bill Pullman that delivers like a, a speech that somehow actually a movie that really was a kind of a cornball movie, like everyone fucking probably watches this on actual Independence Day, like. I don't know. And they're like, I watched Bill it today. Pullman is so good. He's so fucking good. I wish that was our president, not some cokehead and not some insurrectionist. Just that <laughs> guy. Uh, and we'll never see it ever in our lifetime. But uh, I do. And the effects, dude, I remember the effects when I was a kid. I was like, holy shit, it was so fucking badass. It was so cool. I never seen anything like it. Will Smith's, his cavalier attitude, you know, that was like when he actually beat up on, on aliens and he took on the. On the, on the bad guy, and he was the hero, and, and not smacking comedians on stage because they made fun of his bold-ass, bitch-ass wife. That was cool to see. And The, then the real also, Razor said Will Smith, Will Smith slaps in that movie. He did. He, <laughs> what the hell is that smell? And, and you know what? And then he should have turned around and smacked Jada. And it was your vagina that's been fucking used by your fucking son's friend. Disgusting. Either way, moving on. Uh, yeah, I, and not to mention the fact that who else was it? I mean, Jeff Goldblum, come on, are you serious? He played the perfect role in that. Yeah, dude, the memories, and I got, I remember getting, this was one of my first VHSs. I remember getting it with the holographic cover on it for Christmas. Yeah, dude, I got it right here. It's beautiful. Yeah, it was cool. so great. It was so awesome. I'm like, God damn. And I watched it Christmas. I remember opening it up and I watched it Christmas Day. Some good times right there. Yeah, dude. That was right around the time that Scream came out on VHS, too. I can't remember if it was the same, probably not the same year, but like it was around that time that I, because I got them both for Christmas. But yeah, there was nothing like that, that ventricular, lenticular fucking cover, dude, uh, on that VHS. It was yeah. so smooth. And like the, the White House would blow up or what. Here, I'll fucking, mm. if you guys haven't. It was good stuff right there, man. Look this shit. Like, yeah, that was like, that was like heightened, that was like alien technology. I was like, how do they do that? Yeah, January 5th, January 6th. January 5th, January 6th. <laughs> yeah. Dude, who's got a Viking hat? <laughs> it's so cool of the launch. Oh, shit. That was wrong. But no, I fucking, I, I love, dude, I love Independence. It's the first movie I ever went to where, oh, let's kick out Woman of the Well Ministries. Goddamn. Talk Is about, talking about Jesus? No, I don't know if it's Jesus or, or Humphrey Bogart. Leave cousin. her in. <laughs> we need oh, some shit. faith. <laughs> oh wouldn't it be nice someone you know someone went to this church and they were like hey those guys are over there talking about butt fucking well, we, dude, need get the, we need to get of, jesus I, the christ in there i think you were accused of satanism or something i don't know i wasn't well at least people I, recognize, recognize that i love jesus and mike's a piece of shit that worship the satanist. devil's cock because i suck the devil's hates cock. black people I mean, God, how do you think Mike. i got so handsome <laughs> Hating black people and worshiping. Shut the up! <laughs> Is that don't, the fucking secret ingredient? Oh, don't fucking wow. answer that! Don't fucking answer that! Hey, you know what we should answer? I just saw this scroll through, and when something like this scrolls through, you don't fucking ignore it. You just say, "Hey, wouldn't it be nice?" John fucking Winston. Holy Hang on, I'm shit, pull this man! Off real quick, again, again, Billy Bob, a fucking ten Jesus with the fucking five hundred, John. That motherfucker's got a picture now, Jay. Yeah, I know. I was looking at his side profile pic. He looked good, though. Looks like a... Uh, um, um, who's that dude from Magic Mike? Not Channing Tatum, but uh, the dude who almost played... Uh, 
fucking god damn it who's the dude um joe manganella with like a but no maybe maybe a little bit of uh i'm gonna shut the fuck up with super chat. hey hey jay and mike yesterday was my son's birthday he turned 12 and today my daughter's birthday she turned six dude our kids are like almost i have a 13 year old and a seven year old that's crazy my son is in russia and daughter in mexico while i'm mm. stuck in dallas dealing with divorce attorneys that sucks, man Wish them a happy birthday for me. Vaughn and Veronica. First off, those are cool effing names. I feel like I shouldn't actually curse because like we'll talk about your kid. Well, happy birthday fun. to Vaughn and Veronica for sure, man. And yeah. I hope everything works out with those divorce attorneys. That's got to be – I couldn't imagine, man. I mean, that's the only thing good for me was like when I uh, – when, when, well, I didn't. But when I separated from the beast from the east that was my ex-wife, we didn't have any children between us. Uh, Cause that would have been nightmare on wheel, like a hundred percent. So I can only imagine, but I hope it all turns out, but definitely happy birthday to Vaughn and Veronica. I hope it, uh, well, hope it was awesome. And, and thank you, man. Holy shit, man. Thank you, John. Yeah. You're the fucking best dude. We don't deserve you. And yeah, happy birthday, Vaughn and Veronica. And uh, you know, fucking it sucks what you're going through, dude. That does suck what you're going through, but you know, tomorrow's a better day. My friend, it's gotta sure. fucking be. That sh get that shit over with. Get it over with and out of your life. You don't need that shit. Not obviously, but yeah. Happy birthday, Vaughn Veronica. Cheers from everybody. Well, I'm you. not gonna cheer. It's a kid's. I'm not gonna cheer beer. <laughs> you can cheer. I cheer at kids. My I, my kid's birthday party. I was like, yeah. I was like, you're, yeah. You're seven. It's time for your first tequila. <laughs> yep, that's what you do in Kentucky, uh, anyway. Yeah, and now right, here's your first tequila and your pack of smokes. Now go look, mow the lawn. Let's go shoot guns in the backyard. At the landscapers. <laughs> there we go. Oh, now, and we're Christ. gonna go to Win Dixie and get you a little toy afterwards too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you be buying none of that goddamn none of those none of those uh yeah, just shut up. Just shut up, shut up. Sorry, honey. Shut I, had, up. I had too that's many how, PBRs. That's how my nephew says shit. He goes, shut up. It's like <laughs> shut up. That's and, just like, like and the then, lady from Donnie Darko. Yeah, shut but my up. brother, my brother, like that, that's his kid. He's like, "What did you? Don't you say that to me?" He's like, "Shut up!" <laughs> and then he'll he'll be like, "What?" He's like, "Don't see, what'd you say?" And he's like, "Shut up!" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "You are asshole!" Like he turns Don't away. Stop. Like you think he's like finally learned his lesson. Like, shut up! <laughs> shut up! <laughs> oh shit! Thank you so fucking much, John. Thanks, we love John, you, dude. Man. Um. Uh, 80s, 90s, ET, uh, Independence Day. Again, I'm going to go Independence Day as well. It's not really non starter for me. I do like ET a lot. Like, it's a good movie. I showed it to my to my, to my seven year old, and she wants to watch it all the time now. And I'm like, dude, yeah, that most movie kids is love it. It's kind of boring as shit, though. Like, it's funny as hell when he gets drunk and like the, the beer bottles dropping everywhere, but it's also really sad. It's not friendship, you asshole, not beer. Well, I'm just telling you, that's God. that's that's in the movie. ET gets drunk. They might as well call it ET gets drunk. And it's like Batman versus cool. Superman. It's like they only fought for like five minutes of the fucking movie. I only got to see ET get drunk for like five fucking minutes. You know what it is? I yeah, I, I think I, I, no, I'm not gonna say that because I was gonna people are gonna get mad. Like I was gonna say overhyped. It's not overhyped. I mean, it definitely deserves its praise. I, I mean, 100. percent I just feel like maybe I was bombarded all the time about how spectacular and sensational ET was, and then when I watched it, it was it was just to a point where I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's good, but I've seen shit before. Yeah, it's, it's a, a fucking alien, and it's sweet, and it's cute, and D, D and, Walsh and then is great. It, it's got to be yeah. And D Walsh kind of hot, and now it's got to go home, and it's gonna phone. It's gonna phone the fucking guy, so it's not like he's gonna like not hear from him. <laughs> it's not like he's never gonna see him again. <laughs> you want me to feel bad for you, fucking alien? Look no, what I don't you know. Did to us I, I'm just thing. kidding, but you know what I mean. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm picking maybe because we're '90s assholes. We gotta be careful, dude. We gotta be. We gotta be balanced about this shit. Yeah, you gotta no. be what Fox and CNN are trying to be, and they never well, are, which is balanced. We have to be balanced. That's true. It's impossible. But uh, on Independence Day, though, like, yeah, uh, I too much nostalgia for me, man. First movie fun. I ever, first movie I ever went to where the entire crowd stood up after the movie was over and cheered, and it came out during like July Fourth, and this is before everyone mm -hmm. fucking hated each other. At least when we were kids, before we knew they hated each other, because the internet wasn't really there yet, and neither was yeah. Facebook or anything else. Yeah, but just it was such a party when this movie came out, man. And like you said, Bill Pullman as the president is the so president good. we all wish we could have. And then Jeff Goldblum is a smooth. That's actually the movie. president I wish I could have. <laughs> yeah, that'd be it's too. Jeff Goldblum. Just, can we, you imagine him negotiating contracts with China or Russia? Like, yeah. ah, 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 do, do you know? Do you know that in China, <laughs> in China, they invented this language? 
and then he would touch the face <laughs> of the of the of the Chinese president. Your, your skin <laughs> makes me cry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, no. uh, a... <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, but Independence Day wins nineties five to one right now. Nineties kicking ass. Yeah, they they do stealing it. your they chocolate milk. We gotta be careful because I know that some guy is gonna come in here, uh, and they're gonna be like, "I was born in the eighties, and I remember the times." You know, it's gonna be you know somebody that's gonna be very angry that we're that this bias is playing out. It's probably gonna be Dave McRae. And we're just gonna have to like be like, calm it down, man. Back Fuck up a little bit. You weren't invited tonight, okay? The velvet rope separates you from the inside. You're not allowed to come in here and say those things. You know, it's bullshit. Dave calls us after every show and he yells at us. And he's like, he's like, it's fucking Dave again. We put him on speakerphone. <laughs> if you like, were you Canadian, would... you'd be your toenails would be taken out. <laughs> 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 oh fuck yeah uh and also by the way the dude from slash and cast keeps trying to booty call me like oh. I, I get i get missed phone calls from 3 30 a.m from the from the slash and cast dude and i'll text him and i'm like what it's like dude i haven't been booty called a long time he's that like dude, you need yeah you need, you need to get up on that mf look like a uh, teddy rupskin he looked like he could cuddle all night long. Oh, dude, he power lifts. He would. He'd be too rough on me. No, he's not. No, yeah, he could be too rough on my shit about power lifting. He's like, today uh, I lifted a house. Only and tonight I'm lifting that ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make them jeeps clap. Oh, while I yeah. play Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Uh, one of those stories is actually true, by the way. I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to figure out which one is true. <laughs> God damn, I love our random time talk because it means <laughs> nothing to most people. They're like, what? Who are these people? They're like that meme of that woman with her no teeth. She's like, what? <laughs> what? What? Uh, this is a fucking dude. Look at the, look at those fucking pogs, man. Uh, God, yeah, that takes I, me I, back. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> How bizarre. How bizarre. Here's the thing. <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, I don't want to do it again. I know. You know yeah. yeah uh, you know, pogs, my, my heart burns there, too. <laughs> uh i i'm gonna dude i don't want to because I, I mean the bias is coming out so fucking strong dude i didn't collect garbage bell kids all right i saw the movie and the movie by the way is like super fucking rare you have to captain crunch go on the high seeds of the internet to find the movie to even watch it which i did enjoy as the goofy fucking weird ass movie that it was but i never collected the cards because i was a kid i like i was like a three-year-old in diapers i didn't know what the fuck they were <laughs> i know that they were like a cabbage patch like fuck you pretty much like fuck the system fuck the man and fuck cabbage patch too bro like and they would like have these cards and kids were collecting them i mean i think they even went as far as like schools were trying to ban them because they were like corrupting the youth but for me dude it's 90s with the pog dude the pogs were like Dude, you, we were just in that era. Like, I got a slammer. I had the fucking, the, I had like a blue one, not a green one. I had a bunch of pogs too. You go to school, you play your friends, you you you'd use your slammers to win the pogs. I remember a store opened up in our small ass town that was literally just about selling pogs. They were like cashing in on the fan bullshit, and then they closed six months later when the fad went away. <laughs> I was like, uh, it's dude, it's it's nineties for me. It's pogs. It's pogs all day long. Yeah, they, I, I was I was surprised they didn't make a fucking cereal out of pogs, pogs, frosted flakes. Today, it's like yeah, you could do it's whatever. like cardboard. Oh, it is it cardboard. Is. <laughs> <laughs> they, you get one pog underneath the fucking underneath the box, you know, underneath the thing. No, dude, I I agree. Like it, this was easy for me because, um, and I see the chat actually agrees with this too. I, I don't think I saw nearly a nearly a person, uh, nearly a person who said actually garbage pill kids. Most people said pogs, but yeah, dude. They were they were a little bit on the expensive side. I don't think anybody around yeah. actually had like official pogs because like they couldn't really copyright that shit. So Walmart just had the cheaper version of pogs. But like you said, the slammers were like gold or they were silver, yeah. or they'd be shiny as fuck. It was and they like look at this guy, this guy's got like a, you got like a skull and you got like fucking cartoons, and you got this one with weird cuts in it. I'll tell you a secret though. I, I had never the eight won, one. I remember the eight bowl one. No shit. I never fucking one time, dude, played pogs. I collected them. I had a fucking whole tube. You know, I had them all going for me. I traded them with my friends. I never once played play the game. I played it twice, and I lost. And then I, I won the first one, and I only won, like, one ball. I don't even remember the fucking rules. I think the guy was cheating me. Like, he he was just telling me what it was like. You're supposed to stack them and throw the slammer. I don't know how it fucking worked. And, and every I, time you lost, he went another well, inch deeper inside of you. One, but I'd already had, I had another tube of them, so I was like, I don't care. And I had doubles. And, like, he won, like, the shitty ones. 
Oh, but so yeah, you play it, four pogs? So it's basically gambling. Yeah, you, you, like, you would challenge the other person. They would have their pogs, oh. and then you would have your pogs, and then you would use the slammer. I don't remember the exact rules, but it was like something about how they knock go. I don't know. But it was just, uh, it was it was fun while it lasted. But holy shit, whoever made that, that is like talking about sticking it right in the consumer's asshole and pulling it out before she gets like some kind of disease <laughs> and then running away. I guess it would be like actually like pulling it out before she gets pregnant. You know, the old put it in, put it out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I want to know. Like, I, I generally I want to do a documentary and be like, what happened? Like, why didn't Paul's- I think they already had one? Why didn't they stay successful though? Like, why did they go out of business so quickly? Because like, it was, was bubble. It, it was the same thing when people in the '90s were rushing out and they were buying every alternate cover comic book because they they figured they realized how much the 1960s, 50s, 40s, 70s comic books were selling for. So the companies in the '90s started overprinting magazine or comic books, and everybody thought they were going to get rich real quick. While they and so they started going out and buying a fuck ton of comic books all the alternate covers, all this and that. And then when they realized, hey, you know why it's not worth shit? Because everyone has a copy. You can't sell it. And so they were like, oh, well, fuck it. And so the comic book companies were left with these stacks and stacks of unsold uh, comics. And that's why Marvel went bankrupt in the 90s. (laughs) Yeah, no, this shit was crazy, by the way. I was a part of that, too. I was buying them all. I was like, these are going to be worth, just like our 90s cards. Like, these are going to be worth so much fucking money. Uh, so 90s gets another one, and I saw someone say, so <laughs> Patrick Lor- 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 Lorenzo says, I'm too young for this, LOL. And I was like, that's the third time I've heard that this week. Yeah, well, you know, in a few years, man, you're going to uh, be using, uh, you're going to be, like, going over TikTok trends. <laughs> when, you, when you do when you do your videos. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, okay, so. Let's get let's get to a couple super chats real quick, but first we'll answer one more of these. We'll do one now. Answer one more. You get what I'm saying? I told you guys, I'm fucking stupid today. Um, oh, stop, stop. God, I think it's a tough one. It's tough, not for me. You know what my answer is? And I think Jay, honestly, I'm gonna predict. I'm gonna predict that you're actually gonna agree with me on this one. I think you're actually gonna go scream too. Glad you don't to, want to. Verato, fuck you. <laughs> uh, I must. I, I must go into the pathway uh, to that desert camp. That no one wants to attend because it's for a, it's full of a bunch of DD paw collector assholes at the screen camp over my precious Evil Dead. But I have to. Uh, Evil Dead was great. It was original. It was unique. Never seen anything like it before. It did scare the socks off of me when I first watched it. I know it's kind of corny now. It didn't really age that well. But for what they were going for, it actually was a terrifying movie. But Scream was like the Nirvana. We've talked about this before of the 90s horror movies. It was the one that really did revitalize an interest in in horror. Wes Craven was a mastermind in, in how he told the story. To me, Scream is the best of all of them. Uh, it, there will never be anything like Scream ever again. I think it's a unique thing for a reason. I, I like. I feel like Scream is the equivalent of what Freddy Krueger was when he was added into the horror movies or or Pinhead. So it's Scream. Yeah, Scream all day. Yeah, it's tough. To, it's tough to go against the OG. Now, if that was Scream two in there. I know that you would go uh, yeah. even that all day. I'd probably still yeah. go scream too. Yeah, but- I know you would. Take your ass back to fucking <laughs> Jerry O'Connell and suck his dick. <laughs> I would. He's got a he's a handsome. He's man. a handsome dude. Don't get me wrong. God, he sings songs on tables. Uh, I think I'd fuck you. Uh, but yeah, it's scream. I think that's a. Uh, it, but it's a good question. Like when you look at the movies, The Evil Dead. It was the original one. It was a big fucking deal. I still love that movie with my heart and farts. But uh, scream is just too big, too big. Like my dad's wiener. And that's why I Whoa. couldn't take the whole thing at once. You know? I just and that's why it. Mike had to sell his Polaroids before the over, cops showed up. <laughs> I had to take it over several years. Uh, a little bit more at a time. Jesus Christ, that's disgusting. I'd really like to apologize. Nasty. Sometimes I say things and I immediately regret them. And also, I'm gay. Uh, but the point is this. Let's get to some of your all super chats real quick before we get back into the list. So much more. I have so to much more to do. Uh, yeah, you're welcome to go ahead. If you need, well, I'll get now. through. Uh, we'll do some, uh, do, I'm I'm okay. out of drink. I have to refill my cup with your urine. So if you could just, actually, you guys don't know this. Jay and I are actually in the same house, but we're like dogs with food bowl aggression. We just can't be next to each other. <laughs> we're getting fights. Wouldn't you be like those MLG fucking professional uh, video gamers that they all live in the same like fucking million dollar house <laughs> and they're they're streaming at the same time and like one of them's upstairs. Or they're right next to each other, like, dude, fucking shit, dude. <laughs> Seriously, bro. Like, where the fuck are you not watching my flank? What are you doing? Sucking your girlfriend's dick? I'd be like, whoa, dude, calm the fuck down, bro. Like, just because you suck at the game, 
Anyway, I mean, it's so, a bunch of gamers it's Logan, fighting. It's Logan Paul bullshit. You know where they all live in the same house. They do. We're gonna prank this yeah. guy today. We're gonna pull glitter in his car, and when he opens the door, a bunch of glitter's gonna fall out. But don't worry, I'm gonna <laughs> buy him another one. I'm gonna buy him another car. It's a better car. <laughs> and then we're gonna go down the street, and we're gonna throw bricks at homeless people. But don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. I'm gonna buy him McDonald's later. It's gonna be awesome. You guys are gonna love it. Watch this. That's so fucking true, dude. No, like, dude, I see it all Do you time, have a like, small child that lives at your house? No, I'm dude, I see watch it that shit I all the time. Fucking, the worst ones are the ones that be like, the, the, they put the sappy ass music on them. Like, today I went to this one homeless guy and I put, like, <laughs> do you want this? Would you like this food? Would you like food? Are you hungry? And then he accepted it because he was hungry. And then I gave him $500 <laughs> in the bag. And here's his reaction. I'm like, you piece of garbage. You're going to film that for clout, you piece of human fucking walking trash that I hope your leg gets diabetes and then they fall off, you motherfucker, <laughs> so that you're in the same position that that poor soul is. You are using that man or woman, the homeless yeah. person, in order to gain followers or to get clout on YouTube or Twitter. What a disgusting piece of fucking aborted trash from yeah. this earth that you is. And then they go, and they go, but they can't say nothing about it because I gave home. No, then they money. do the fake. It's like someone spray me, spray me. And then a tear. Do you see? <laughs> <laughs> she was just so grateful. It's so and disgusting. Everybody smash that like button right now if you love homeless people. <laughs> dude, I, I watched the worst one. I don't know who this fucking dude was. He was such a piece of shit, dude. I don't know if it was a TikTok. I think it was a TikToker. Of course it was. He goes, the whole joke for him was to go up to the homeless person and he goes, hey, man, what would you like to eat today? What would you like to eat today? And the guy tells him, he's like, would you like a burger? Would you like a bacon? Oh, he's got to have a baconator. And then he goes and gets a baconator. Ooh, fuck, dude, it makes me so mad. He gets the baconator. He goes to the alley where this is a real poor, like an actual homeless man. And he's like, "Hey, man, do you want you want the baconator, right?" And he's like, "Yeah." And he starts eating in fucking front of him, and he starts eating in front of him. And that's the joke, right? And then what he's supposed to do is he wants the guy to get a reaction. And when the guy doesn't, he just kind of like, "I was ooh, I felt so fucking bad for him." And then he like, "I'm I'm just kidding, y'all. I'm gonna go back in and get him a real baconator sandwich." But it's all fucking good. It's all funny. And <laughs> oh, then he came back. So he went baconator. back in. Goes back out, the guy's gone. And then he goes down to all these homeless oh. people and he's like, Oh, anybody want to bake it? This one dude was like, Get the fuck out of here, you piece of shit. I'm gonna like he's like, I know what you're doing. I was like, I wish you got fucking shanked, bitch, and you're well, fucking you know. nutsack. Because you didn't have <laughs> nuts anyway. A piece of Andy Dufresne died that anyway, day. That shit pissed me out. I, I feel so bad for those people. Like everybody goes down the luck, but some little bastard on TikTok to come up and oh, use you for clout. Well, dude, and they do it on the bigger levels too, like YouTube and shit like that. They yeah, just don't yeah. show like they obviously when the guy filming is in control of editing, they're not going to show the moments where they fuck up yeah. and and really mess up one of those dudes' day. And it's like it's it's hard because it's how about like, just okay, don't film it. How about just don't film it? If you feel yeah. like being charitable, just be charitable. Well, you know, I need maybe content, do the nice bro. things for the reward of being nice, like because you feel good that you help somebody's day, not because you're going to get fucking clicks. What a right. fucking piece of shit. I, yeah. I I don't know, man. It's just you try what a crazy listing. world we live in, and that was brought to you by Disney. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Welcome, right. Colton. By the way, Colton Campbell is the guy we were talking about. We watched him do this, and he oh. jumped into the chat to talk about it. Uh, he also uh, smells his own farts. And uh, no, I was just kidding, Colton. Oh, uh, Colton. So well, he's playing new... video games. Of course, you have to. You have no time. <laughs> uh, new Killers of the Flower Moon trailer looks so good, dude. I have not seen the trailer for it, it was... yet. That sounds familiar. What is that? It's the Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese, oh, and yeah, right, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It's the new fucking epic from the greats of the great of the great. Yeah, but I, I always thought that Leonardo DiCaprio kid. He might be going somewhere. I think he, yeah, it's, yeah. Speaking of that dude who was like, "I'm too young for this." Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's every girl that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio picks up. But mm. no, dude, like, I honestly, I've not seen the trailer for. It. I only saw like a clip from the trailer, and something happened, so I had to pause it, and I never got back to it. But I'm excited for that movie. All you gotta tell me is DiCaprio, Scorsese, De Niro. Pacino, fucking Pesci. Like, I'm not saying they're all in it, but any of those names tied yeah. to Scorsese, I'm like, I'm in the theater fucking day yeah. one. It's like know? finding out that Kiss reunited. You're like, what? Yeah. For and real? It's like, no, I'm just kidding. Ace Frehley and Peter Chris still hate fucking Gene Simmons. And that's not. All right. Well, I'll be back. All right. Uh, Sinister Creation says, Yo, guys, glad I could make it. Good to see your faces. Good to see your face, man. I, I don't actually see your face, but I can feel you. And also, I'm watching you from your window, and I'm touching myself. Um, by the way, you're out of shampoo, just so you know, uh, if that helps. Joe Valentine said, sup, guys? Needed these laughs tonight. Thanks, boys. Thank you, dude. Thanks for showing up and hanging with us. It's fucking awesome to have you here. And it's awesome to be queer. 
Uh, Angelo, the Cisco kid. What's up? I, I don't know why, but like, I feel like that's like the 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 second part of the drive-in that comes on after Fievel goes west. Double showing tonight. Angelo, the Cisco kid, and Fievel goes west. Uh, what do you guys think of the new DC Universe having a movie dedicated to each Bat family? Maybe a Red Hood versus Nightwing or Batman and Damien movie? Dude, I just think that they shouldn't. And I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I just think that less is more when it comes to superheroes right now. I think they should just tighten it up a little bit. You know, I heard today, I think somebody said that uh, uh, it was one of the scoopers that they're thinking about actually now branching out Pattinson's DC, um, Matt Reeves' DC Batman and branching it out into its own universe, separate from DCU, but a universe in its own right and actually spreading out. And I'm like, ah, fuck, sometimes too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. And I think that's what we're experiencing. It took a long time, but I think we're starting to experience that with superhero movies. And I think that those are movies that should just be esoteric and should be, they should put a lot of work into just making this movie right now and not thinking about the future. And that's why the Batman was so good, uh, even though I don't like it as much as everybody else does. But yeah, man, I just don't, I think it's just too much, you know, it's just too much fucking Batman. Uh, and I, I'm, I'll ne I never be one to be like, stop making fucking Batman movies. All right. Enough is enough. Like people do with like Halloween and shit like that. I always want more, but like if they were doing three different universes of fucking Halloween and Michael Myers, then even I'd be like, shit, I'm fucking tired. All right. My butt's sore. I can't take anymore. Um, but it, it'd be a good idea if, if they got it right. And you know, you can't trust them to get it right though. Cause look at them. Uh, Jack Ryan Boyd who is also a Tom Clancy novel character, says that other detective in Scream 3 is underrated. You're making a movie called Stab. She was stabbed. Lots of love. Uh, yeah, dude, I know what you're talking about. It's the, it's the dude with a super dry sense of humor. It looks like Ben Stiller's cousin. He's like, they're making a movie called Stab. She was stabbed. <laughs> like, worst fucking cop ever. But yeah, that dude's comedy was underrated. And he's so forgettable. Like, you do forget about him. But when you watch the movie, you're like, I kind of like that guy. Because everybody else in Scream 3 is so glitzy, glamour, Hollywood. And this dude's like, I don't give a shit. My pants are too baggy. I don't know. Fucking, I've got to go take care of my mom and bring her some Arby's. I can give a shit less about any of this. Hey, you're Sydney Prescott. People try to kill you. That's great. I'm going to go get a Pop-Tart. Trey Phil met it. What's up, dude? He said, what's up, guys? Big gulps, huh? Nice. Well. See you later. Quick question. What is your favorite ending scene in of all time in any movie? Favorite ending scene of all time in any movie? I'll go with seven. Yeah. Yeah. That the ending of seven really just I stayed home from school. And a lot of you have heard this story, but I'll share it again. <laughs> um, but it's like it's like my wife when, when I asked her for the 75th time, like, do we have plans this weekend? Said, like knowing damn well that I've asked her 17 times before. And she's like, if you fucking ask me one more time, if we have fucking plans, I swear to God. And I'm like, chill, chill, put your clothes on. Uh, but he says, uh, it, it's seven. Yeah, no, I stayed home from school one day. Sorry, I told you guys I'm brain dead as fuck right now. Uh, too many surveys last night during the 4th of July. But um, I sounded like actual Dr. Chalice right there, didn't I? Uh, one too many cervezas. I'm going to go and I'm going to slap some butts. I'm going to have some naps. And I'll call you tomorrow, Linda. But uh, no, uh, seven. <laughs> when that movie and I stayed home from school, fake six, stayed home from school, rented it on pay-per-view. And I'm so fucking old that this is like 96 or whatever, right? I had to pick up the phone and dial the pay-per-view and give them like my dad's password. And like hang up the phone. Like, yeah, I'll have I want the seven uh at uh 2 35 p.m. Yeah, perfect time for me to watch MTV's grind. And uh yeah, thank you. Hang up the phone, and then like you have to turn to channel 372 and wait for your movie to start. And it was like a really fun experience. Like it, it was annoying and inconvenient, but still fun. Watch seven, and that movie ends, and I'm just sitting there going, like, I'm fucking gobsmacked. You know, it was like, what's in the box? And then it ends, and the fucking just, I was like, God damn it, that was cool as fuck. Like, are there other movies out here? Let me jump on the internet. Oh, it doesn't fucking exist yet. Or it does, but only rich people have it at this point. So, yeah, uh, that would be my favorite ending of all time, man. Special, that's really what started my movie love deeply. I had it before, but that's, it really threw some flames on that big gay fire. Austin, if I had the money, resources, I'd like to build a time machine and put you both on the Titanic with jetpacks. <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> like, 
at first I was like, Austin wants to see us drown, and that's fucking weird, but not surprising. Uh, but then oh, Jay's back. Um <laughs> Jay, Jay, put walk me through the, your emotional response to what you read on your screen here from Austin. If I had the money slash resources. I'd like to build a time Why are you machine. being so dramatic? Because I because it <laughs> reads like that. If I had the money slash resources, I'd like to build a time machine and put you both on the Titanic with jetpacks. Only then could I save you both. I don't know, Austin. I, I think that's a little gay, to be honest. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. I guess he's trying to say he would want us to be saved. He wouldn't want us to go down with the Titanic. Right, but we weren't on it. But so, I mean, like, but you'd be putting us in danger just to. Take I would us never out. have the fucking money to be on the. Titanic. I'd be like, <laughs> fuck that shit. No, that, that's money. we would we be on the the cheaper generic that we'd be on the Titanic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if, if back in those days, that'd be me trying to escape my ex-wife and just like hitching a ride on the Titanic, like fucking Leonardo, but not being as good looking or awesome as him. So just being like a fucking just a dish washer from like dragging the Bruce Lee story. <laughs> oh, well, I appreciate the sentiment, Austin. Yeah, yeah, but it'd be weird. Like, so I have a jetpack. But like, how many people can I save? Like, well, I try you wouldn't to give a fuck. It. Don't don't act like you're the rocketeer. No, I take a, a baby or something. I <laughs> no, you would You would not. Yeah, well, like, fuck you, dude. I try, fuck you. Like, I'd save everybody. It's like I try to take a baby, but the fucking thing was too heavy, so I had to go. Like it threw <laughs> off the balance of the equilibrium of the of the rocket boosters. Me and Jay, me and Jay, flying through the skies. Like, dude, I feel really bad. I'm like, I know, me too. Hey, you want to go to White Castle? <laughs> <laughs> and we'd be like, we'd be like that uh, in, in what was that movie where they get superpowers? It's found footage. <laughs> uh, Chronicle. Chronicle. I'm mean, be like, fly. Because Andrew, what did you do? Be like, you <laughs> dropped the baby. <laughs> like, I just want to go to Siberia, bro. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go tinkle. Get me another drink. It's 8:19 p.m. is where we are with mm. marvelous Niaz. Thank you, Hold marvelous. Uh, Hold actually, we're at second. Joshua Ayers right beneath. Hey, it's been it's it's good to see you, Josh. Man, good to see your fucking name and that that horn that horny horns that you've got on there. I miss you, dude. I miss you. Come over. We'll make big gulps. Who? We'll take big gulps of each other's cock. Uh, Joshua Ayers at 8.20 p.m. Oh, 8.20. Okay. I'm getting there. Don't worry. No. no, no. I'm all Joshua Ayers. Hey, thank you guys for showing up tonight, man. Really needed this for show. Thank you guys. Yeah. Joshua Ayers. There we go. Gotcha. Hell yeah. Be right back. Go drain that wiener. Oh, I'm Joshua Ayers. Uh, what's up, boys? Been a while since I caught a live stream. Y'all still sexy. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate it. My hair's a little longer. I'm starting to look like fucking Joe Elliott from Def Leppard. I got to get this shit cut. I think tomorrow, hopefully, I get it cut tomorrow. But we appreciate it, man. It's been a while since I've seen you. It's been nice. I like that fucking devil shit you got going on in your profile pic there. Nice stuff stuff right there. Okay. Let me get down through here. Let me just go through here. Moving on through. Uh, Michael Parton says, I can show you guys some of my favorite toys other than action figures. Okay. Show it up. Mike's inbox is always open. Take some pictures. Show it up. No big deal. Let's see it. <laughs> Let's see that shit. Can't show it on stream, though. Eric Olson, thank you so much. Says, sup, dudes? I have to work till 5 a.m. Glad to be listening to Wham to get me through it. Man, that fucking sucks, dude. But, yeah, man, we're happy to have you. Hopefully this isn't too boring. You're not going to go turn us off. And, like, I'd rather fucking, like, work than listen to these two assholes. We appreciate you, Eric. Thank you, man. Hope work goes well. Uh... Axion Jexion, thank you, says, I'd love to fight both of you at the same time, then make up over inner thigh massages in a nice rom-com. Maybe a light pasta salad, too. And if we are lucky, some Bed Bath Beyond. We just don't know if we're going to have enough time for all of these things crammed in with each other. But yes, Axion Jaxion, that sounds lovely. That sounds like a nice, oily time. Where's my oil? Where's my buttercream? I'm going to get old up and fight this fucker. Take your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like it, Axion. That's a that's a Joshua says, Hello, is it me you're looking for? Yes, Joshua, it was. And we found you. Thank you, Joshua. Yes. We've been missing you for quite a while. Oh, I thought I heard fucking I was like, did that was that gunshots or just a fucking uh firecracker eh, or a firework? It was a firework, but for a second there, I was like, holy shit, dude. Uh, did I read this? Okay, yeah, I did. Yeah, because we got to John. All right. Uh, let's keep going, rolling through here. Uh, Danny Darby says, sup, dudes? 
I, I'm sorry I yell because I know that some of you are listening with headphones. You're like, stop, dude. But I mean, he said it in all caps, so I have to. Uh, what a great night for a live stream. Haven't been on one of these for a long time. Mike, have you seen the trailer for Kyle Galliner's new movie, The Pasture? Looks intense. Love you, dudes. I will ask Mike if you've seen it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Guess what, guys? My adult beverage is in a red cup, you see. But you see, the problem is, is there's a fucking crack in this. And it just spilled on my crotchels. God. The whole car smells like beer. They're never going to believe I wasn't drinking. Sure, um, oh, hold on. Let me tag you real quick, dude. Uh, Danny Darby at 840. So I'll let Mike. Oh, 840. Um, keep on scrolling. Keep on scrolling. Keep on cruising. Keep on going. Here we go. We're getting back through there. Okay. Oh, um, Wade's Movie World. What a great name. Hey, guys. Not much to say except Mike and Jay. You both were the chosen ones. It was said that you would destroy the Sith. Not join them. Bring balance to horror movies, not leave them in darkness. Hello there. Yes, dude. Awesome. Fuck. You know what? It took me years to really appreciate Revenge of the Sith. I remember liking You know, I didn't hate it when it came out. I think it was a hell of a lot better than Attack of the Clones, because Attack of the Clones was a pretty smelly pile of shit. Let's be honest. Hayden Christensen was fucking awful. It was like a mannequin with two legs that came to life like Pinocchio and was trying to act. But he got better in Revenge of the Sith. And there was a lot of... And then going back as an older adult, and watching it, I really do enjoy it. It's way better than the sequel trilogy that we got. <laughs> Fucking holy shit. But yeah, man. Thank you, man. Wade's Movie World. Thank you so much. Scrolling, scrolling. Hey, uh, June's talking about free feet pick. If you guys know about it, send it to that weird guy, girl, whatever. He didn't get banned. We must have, we have no moderators. Holy shit. Somebody send that motherfucker some feet pick, June. Jerry Ramey says, only superhero movies I'm looking forward to is Superman Legacy, X-Men, and Fantastic Four. I will agree with you, Jerry. I think that well, Superman, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what they do. I think the biggest one for me is X-Men. I really want to see how they incorporate that into the overall MCU because it's going to be really interesting. It's going to change the whole, the whole universe because then you're going to introduce um mutants and you're gonna you know the whole thing it's just gonna be awesome the fantastic four obviously first family they've never done a correct fantastic four at least they've never done a good movie of fantastic four so it's gonna be really interesting to see what mcu does with that superman legacy i did see who they cast it uh, who they who they cast as superman um and i know it's not uh i think superman legacy is the one with uh, james gunn right uh to be honest with you man he looks like he's um He's like the wish.com looking version of Henry Cavill. I'm not saying the guy's not going to be good, but if you look them like side by side, it's like, why the fuck did you fire Henry Cavill? Like it was Henry Cavill. I was going to say, I was trying to say Hank or thinking, I'll just call him Hank Cavill, but why did you do that? And you hired this dude that looks like pretty much like him. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to get on a whole rant about that. Okay, guys. Um, Vernon, jo Vernon, John, the Piper son, <laughs> Vernon, John, the Piper son. Uh, first super chat ever. Me and my girlfriend of 15 years finally got engaged. Congratulations, dude. Fuck yeah, that's awesome, dude. 15 years, holy shit. I guess you finally listen to that song. If you know, if you want it, put a ring on it. <laughs> Wherever that shit goes, I don't. I never listen to it. Can I give a Loomis shout out to my fiance Kimberly for finally nailing me down? Sure. Hey Kimberly, good job. You've done it. You've successfully gotten the man in your web it is your choice whether or not you're going to suck his blood and leave him a dried up husk or nurture him to the coming years because there will be bad times but congratulations kimberly <clears throat> hopefully you won't become some soul-sucking witch from which there's no escape and oh, he wishes those 15 here? years never happened but anyway good luck and and happy congratulations to you uh, by the way, there is a thing uh, for 840 that someone was asking for you. Uh, I don't remember the guy's name, but he was asking a specific question for you about um, a trailer. I stopped at uh, Jack Up at 904, but the, it was Jack 840. Jack Up! <clears throat> what about a kiss about a time? <laughs> oh, uh, let me find it here real quick. 840. That's where Jay stopped or found a lover in a Texaco bathroom. And then they did stuff together, and then they fucked. Yeah, his name was Terry. 
he was a Scorpio, and we had a wonderful time. He held Scorpios. me afterwards. Scorpios are the best in bad. The best oh. in bad. Danny Dory! Uh, <laughs> seen the trailer for Kyle Gallagher's new movie, The Passenger. Looks intense. Love you, dudes. No, I haven't, but is it a is it a horror movie? Because uh, I just saw he's in another horror movie called it's called like Mommy Look Out or something like I can't remember the name of it, but like mm. dude, Kyle Gallner's IMDB is fucking stacked with like great movies. And it's so weird. I, I was watching Red Eye the other day with Wes Craven, and he's the oh, kid. I you know the porn. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Brown Eye, Brown oh, Eye and Me. Crazy. Um, but he's in that movie too. Uh in Red Eye is the kid who loses his pen. But no, I'll check that out for sure, man. Thanks for the thanks for the heads up on that. See, Danny, he hadn't even seen it. Sorry, I'm sorry. I got a little weeder and it makes me upset. God. Shit. Fuck. Fart. Hey, here's a fucking fun one. Mm. Check this morose motherfucker out right here. Dude. <clears throat> this <is> dumb. <clears throat> no, dude. <clears throat> oh, there is the no choice in this one for me. It's, <laughs> there is no choice. I got I got to start remembering and help me do this, please, because someone I put these all on the podcast afterwards and someone was like, dude, sometimes you don't actually say what movies you're talking about. And I have no idea listening to the podcast. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. So uh, on the 80s side, we got Masters of the Universe Castle Grayskull set. Ah, the nice. whole fucking thing, the whole play set with designed by Ozzy Osbourne, sold by Mattel. <laughs> yeah. And then at uh, uh, the 90s side, we have Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Power Dome Morphin play set, which is basically uh lord zed's Z zed yeah zed yeah lord zed's uh yeah the, his base designed by george michael of wham produced by bandai <laughs> <laughs> uh, i uh dude i mean listen for me uh this is for me it's a home run with the fucking castle grayskull dude what a badass place set that is i remember i didn't like i inherited this from the my older uncles that had had castle grayskull growing up and as a kid, it was the coolest looking fucking thing I've ever seen. It's so badass. It's so cool. There's so many activities that we can do. There's so many times we can pretend to do things in our fucking badass castle that looks like a fucking skull on the front. <laughs> and you can say, fabulous secret powers were revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and said, by the power of Grace Skull. <laughs> That's some good shit right there. And then in the Power Rangers. Well, I say power when I come. Dome, yeah, well, in the power dome, in the power dome, while cool, and we did have this as well, and it was hard as fuck to find. Uh, it's kind of plain, isn't it? It kind of looks like some bullshit that you put together yourself. Like, and this is actually sold by a toy company. It looks like kind of garbagey. And I remember uh, the Zordon. You could flip his face. Like they could have put some water in that bitch to make it look a little bit better. Like some, <laughs> was, you know, or like you could fill it up with water and put like a bobblehead. I don't know something, but. It was kind of basic and cheap. Dude, the Castle Grayskull thing is unique fucking design. Look how badass it looks. It's got a fucking flag at the top to let bitches know <laughs> this shit is conquerable. Not. You got the wizard, the sorceress that lives in that bitch. I mean, and look at the, by the way, I always love this too. Look at the cover art for the 80s, the, 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 the Castle Grayskull. He-Man defending Castle Grayskull against Skeletor in an epic battle. You see, and then you got these two doofuses on the right. <laughs> they they, they look know, like the two kids from Funny Games that are about to storm yeah. in your house and murder your family. Yeah, they do. That that or or, or definitely people that follow the children of the corn religion, and they're just <laughs> pretending to be like into the toy so you can buy it, and then they can infect your family with their bullshit. But yes, dude, the one on the left, look at the, like that just grabs your eye. This one on the right, be like, yeah, okay, some two generic white kids that are having a good time <laughs> and they look like they just got out of Sunday school. Why are they both wearing white fucking polo shirts? Are they twins? No, <laughs> yeah, they don't dude, even know each other. They're some murderous little fucking kids. They really are. There's no doubt about it. And look at the, look at the yellow Ranger just sitting down there on that thing. Like, God damn. Uh, yeah. I, I do, I do got to put it to a vote though, dude. And the only reason is like, I, I know that I, I really feel deeply in my, in my heart and farts that, that grass gray skull will win, but I never, <laughs> I never got into fucking He-Man. Like Why? I never did. Yeah. Like you I don't I like never... dudes running around in their underwear, I with know. Their chest out, half naked, slaying I... <laughs> demons with their sword, looking at cool stuff with their hair. Of course. And you're turning me on right now. But like, yeah, I just never I, I liked it. I had some of the toys. I'd watch the show from time to time, but it never did for me what these Power Rangers did. And also, dude, we could never afford the fucking Power Rangers toys. And I was like all into that shit. So yeah. like uh, I, you know, I never had the set. I, I did have the single figures. Like we were, we were a middle class family, so we had the, I had the single figures, but I couldn't get the play sets. So I always like endearingly looked on these things. And I remember going over your all's house, and you had the the Masters yeah. of the Universe, the the Gray Skull, but we'd always use it for other shit. 
Like we never played He Man, but we're like, this is this is such a cool thing that we're gonna use it for Star Wars or, or, or about, something like know? yeah, or like maybe Batman got beat up really severely by the Joker and now he's turned the Bat Cave into like a troll <laughs> face, and now it's time for vengeance because I had the I had the Nightfall Batman too. I was like, yeah. this is where the Nightfall Batman hangs out, but I had the Power Dome. The Power Dome. You know, it was cool at the time, but it was so. I mean, I I think I played with it for like a week, and then I got bored of it. But the Castle Grey School, man, it was just so. It was so versatile. You could do a lot of things with it. Uh, yeah, it's it's it's. I love the fucking box. I wish I could have got the when they re released it. I think Maddie, uh, Collector dot com, and I couldn't. I I was like, I didn't have the money. I think it was like three hundred something bucks. It's, I was like, I'm not. <laughs> I can't justify that on a fucking <laughs> on a toy. I yeah. wish I could if I had like you know Sebastian Bach money. Where that guy goes out and buys like two hundred fifty thousand dollars comic books, but I don't. Yeah, I wish, dude. I do. There's so much shit I would buy. It would be retired. I'd be on every show at Blink's tour. I'd go to every single one. <laughs> I just travel and follow them around. Um, all right, so that's that one, and that one's up to you guys. We'll see what happens with that one. I, I'm pretty sure that that one. Oh, we already did this one. What the fuck, Greg? Uh, another toy pops up on the '80s version. You got the original Light Bright. And everybody remembers that you put the little pegs in, you peg it, and it makes like lit up light up drawings. Yep. <clears throat> and in the 90s, you got creepy crawlers. Remember with all the fucking bugs and the goo and shit like that that you would play with? Yeah. Uh I I'm gonna tell you, man, for me, it's it's creepy crawlers, no doubt, because like light bright's like cool, it's art. I'm done like after five minutes. But creepy crawlers, it was worth it just even though it was cheap as fuck, like the stuff that you got, and it was actually really expensive to buy, you could fucking you could have a good time with that shit. You know, playing with the goop and being nasty. Yeah, um, I, I we had a light bright. I, I don't. I feel like Egon. We had part of a slinky, and then I straightened it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's like you mean you didn't even have a slinky? Um, yeah, I remember seeing a light bright that was like half broken, and a couple of the pegs still worked at my dad's house. Uh, uh, and, and not that he had it; like he had two. My half brother and sister lived with him. It wasn't like my real dad just like had a light bright. <laughs> like, I bought a light bulb. <laughs> it wasn't like that. But uh, I went over and I saw it was like broke because those kids didn't like it either. And I didn't, I was like, yeah, it's kind of stupid. I, I remember Creepy Crawlers though. I remember, like, I think they had a cool, like, uh, commercial for it. Uh, like, and, and those, awesome. yeah, well, it was Play Doh, right? It was like, you could, yeah, it was just like a simple thing. You can make, you know, little bugs out of it. Like every boy's yeah. wet dream, I'm going to make some bugs. <laughs> I got gum on my shoe. Gum. Gum. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And light brights, dude, those little fucking pegs would just get lost around the house. Any kid's house you went to that had a light bright, they're like, oh, you got a light bright. They're like, yeah, dude, but I lost all the fucking pegs to That's it. So That's like, every time. Yeah, they're all creepy looking and shit like that. And creepy crawlers on the other, like that, that wasn't a mainstay either. That shit, you weren't keeping it around. Like you lose those two, and it was also cheaply made and shit. But the boxes, look at that fucking artwork, man. That is sexy as shit. Yeah, dude. Like, that's like, cool. it, not sexy because there's kids. I shouldn't no, say yeah, that. But it's, yeah. excuse me. The artistic like rendering of 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 the product is yeah it's incredible. the worm sexy worm so yeah. sexy on the creepy were... crawler side yeah it, it definitely looks if you ever those if, yeah if you if you, you remember those uh if, if you had a creepy crawler and you were like and you saw this artwork that they're having on the creepy crawlers box you definitely had those trapper keepers or those folders with the like outlandish <laughs> like weird like funky uh, designs on them and you had a bunch of those in your backpack that's what you had. Yeah, and, and you had just, the, that, those kids' faces remind me of that. You remember the Yikes pencils that were all like, mm -hmm. I got wacky pen. It's a triangle shaped pencil. They smelled so good, though. Like I see those faces, I just think of goosebumps coming on TV later on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that was. I think that's the best part about the '90s is that like neon green fucking like gooey vibe. Like Surge, neon green was a '90s thing. Like this shit, Surge, fucking Nickelodeon slime. Yeah, it was all there, man. By the way, the, I think a lot of kids might actually, or or people that are watching the stream would be they got introduced to light bright they used it in um stranger things season one to communicate so that was the first time they got introduced light bright was cool man but it kind of was boring right you just yeah. spell shit and you're like you're like how many times are you gonna spell suck dick when you get all the, <laughs> you're, you're look like, dude yeah. i made a penis with my I light mean, bright. It, don't get me wrong as, as dudes that that will entertain you for about three years don't get me wrong but then I eventually you're like i want to do something else like in my life I'm gonna come out using a light bright. Like, I do. I wish hey, I had a light bright behind. I would totally have a light okay. bright behind. It says "sucks dick," and I would have <laughs> "sux sucks dick." We should get a light bright. Like, I wonder if you can still buy those things. Yeah, they uh, have them at Walmart. Either way, '90s gets another one from both of us. That's a, that's a that's this a lot. So cool. totally, like, I know, bad, dude. Like, here's, here's a, gonna be so biased. Here's a good one, dude. On the '80s side, John Carpenter's "The Fog." 
on the 90 side, Robert Rodriguez is the faculty. It's not Josh fair. Comey I don't even want to talk about it. It's not. <laughs> this is ridiculous, dude. This is like right now, like we already know how Rocky two ends. This is like watching <laughs> Rocky two. Everybody knows that Rocky wins. Um, I guess we're going to jack you up. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the faculty for me, dude. And uh, again, it has nothing to do. I know the fog is classic. I know that people love it. I understand why they why they why they love it. It is a great movie, but I never got into it the same way. I guess I don't know. I don't know what it was. Different time period. I I remember my dad talking about the fog when I was younger, and he liked it a lot. Like he loved that shit. Like he thought it was so cool. The pirate stuff, all the you know the ghost. It was yeah, definitely. I get why it's cool at the time when you motherfuckers barely have calculators that work <laughs> but when you get in the 90s man the faculty was like I, I don't know man it captured the youth of the 90s so fucking awesomely i mean and it was just so well done it's corny cheesy b movie ish for sure but it was just like in a, in a way that i never seen it before and i loved it yeah i i'm i'm, I'm with you dude i'm the faculty and, and like i'm the same as you dude like i i think the fog i know people love that movie and it gets a lot of love and praise and i enjoy it for what it is just for the the john carpenter music john carpenter is actually in that movie which is hilarious and then like i mean uh oh fuck what's her name uh adrian barbero yeah barbero can never say her name right uh she had the great cleavage in uh, escape from new york Ooh. and in this movie she was hot as shit too john carpenter actually like married her how weird yeah. is that to think about yeah, he he fucked her, dude. <laughs> that motor <laughs> boat son of a bitch. They had sex motor, together. He saw them titties. He's like, I'm, I'm gonna get in there. Several occasions. Uh, but he's yeah, smoking no. his cigarettes and his leather jacket. He's like, I'm gonna rub my face in tits. Playing PlayStation One. Yeah, he was talking to. He was talking to Kurt Russell. He's like, Hey, Kurt, I'm gonna rub my face in titties. <laughs> <laughs> It's so weird to look at the two of them and be like, you guys fucked, didn't you? Yeah. I know you did. Yeah, I can't um, wait for him to come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> good thing you good thing he already said no. Yeah. Uh but no, so uh, but on, as far as the fall goes though, I or uh, um yeah, I I do love it's basically got Dr. Chalice in it, which is a great mm. thing. Tom Atkins in that movie, when he picks up Jamie Lee Curtis, and that that relationship was so weird because he just picks up a hitchhiker and she's like, You're kind of weird, aren't you? And he's like, he's drinking a beer while driving, he's like yeah yeah i am weird all right and they're just like well, fucking all right and they just like drive it and they just go fuck and they just fuck for the entire movie and they fuck in a boat and like but yeah the the horror version of it never never stuck with me the way it did other people the faculty on the other hand um was just so fucking you know as you know it's a screamish you had the josh hartnett with the h2o haircut fucking this the it did not age well like the cgi in it's no. absolutely fucking terrible it's still good though yeah, but it does have that. It has that Robert Rodriguez fun vibe to it. And it's just a fucking kick ass '90s movie. So yeah, uh, once again '90s '90s '90s, skin in that smoke wagon tonight. It's ain't it's fair, y'all. It ain't fair. I mean, goddamn. Hey, put one up for the '80s though, because Castle Grayskull just won sixty percent to forty percent over the I Power think, Rangers. I power po cock. Po you dumb. must you must raise the Master Sword up and feel the power of Grayskull. You must <laughs> suck that wiener. At the 7 Eleven park, how many, how many of y'all don't be honest? How many of y'all did you name your dick Castle Gray School? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Lower the gates, the winch wishes to have an audience. <laughs> I, I call my dick Highlander because even though it's small and, and weird and bent, it, it's there, there's only one, there can only be one. I only... call I call my dick, uh, when it's like shriveled and and slightly and, and definitely small and to the side, Prince Adam, and then when it's like He Man, it's He Man. Like when I when I get horny, it's lifting the sword, <laughs> yeah. and then lightning comes through. <laughs> and it, it, it sometimes it, it gets sticky. Sometimes it's it's sticky. I call mine uh, Ant Man because sometimes it gets big, but usually it's small. Dude, why did you put these two facing off against each other, you asshole? Because you know well, I don't not? like H two O. I know you don't like H2O, but I also know that we both find Friday the 13th as a movie itself to be quite well, overrated. This was a manipulation for me to want to say H2O because you know <laughs> that you'll be... Uh, hold on. What the fuck is that? Motherfucker, dude. There was a spider, dude. And I, and I, fucking, I don't know where it went. Like, Let it bite you, dude. No, I do. I got bit uh, yesterday on my arm. I was pulling weeds from the grass. <laughs> Because uh, it's been raining a lot, so I was pulling weeds. Jay has a garden. Uh, no, yeah, secret garden. <laughs> Only me. Uh, but I, there was like one of those little spiders, and I did that. I'm like, what if I get superpowers? And I didn't. It just hurt. 
Uh, anyway, um, the whole thing, this was a manipulation tactic because Mike knows I don't like H2O, but he also knows I find Friday the 13th after you've seen it one time with Pamela Voorhees, while it's great and classic, you don't need to see it anymore. You don't need to watch it because you just want to see Jason, so you move past it. So in this instant, I have to fucking give it to H2O <laughs> because I don't want to, but at least the fucking movie was entertaining, I think, in my opinion, more than the Friday the 13th film was overall and i can watch h2o i don't want to but i can watch h2o more than one time and kind of feel cool and not cool but like excited about watching it i don't want to ever i don't do i never i swear to god i know that you purists you fucking purist friday the 13th fans i know you're gonna say there's no way dude there's no way i wouldn't watch the first one if I'm on a binge tonight, I'm going to watch the first one all the way to the last one. You're a liar, and your pants are going to fall off because they're full of shit, and there's so much fire going on. There's no way in my, there's no way you tell me the truth that you definitely watch the first one. If you're on a binge run, you skip that bitch because you already know what happened. And they give you a fucking rehash in the second one anyway, and you get to see Backhead Jason, and then you get to have all that good times. So no, for me, it's H2O just because I think that Friday the 13th, once you've seen it once, you seen it. You've seen speed it. round. Speed round, though. Speed round. Friday the Thirteenth Part Two versus H Two O. Which one do you take? Part two. Part three. Part Part three. Part four. Obviously, Part four. Part five. I mean, I'll take H Two O over five. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, guess, I, I, I do. I I grown to respect uh, five though a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I I go, dude. I go H Two O here. I I actually thought this was a good one just because like. Uh, even though Friday the 13th is hugely overrated as a movie because technically it didn't even start the franchise, you could argue that Friday the 13th almost has nothing to do with the success of that franchise, right? Yeah. Because, like, the movie itself, the well, kills... Dude, you're going to get fucking ripped on fucking I'm comments. just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, like, like Pamela Voorhees was great, you know? Like, nothing wrong with that. Like, yeah. she was she was great uh, at the end. She was crazy. She was really scary. She was, like, when, when your mom is... When you wake up at, like, noon... And like you should have gone to college by now, but you haven't, yeah. and you hear your mom vacuuming, and you know what kind of mood she's gonna be fucking in when you walk downstairs. That's basically who she played in that fucking movie. But like it, it really has nothing to do with success of the other movies, in my opinion, other than the campground and all that. But anyways, I take H two O also, even though I have a lot of qualms with it as well. I just think it's a way funner movie to to watch and to take in than Friday the Thirteenth is just. Just if you if you put them next to each other and you're being honest with each other, which one are you going to watch? You're going to fucking watch H2O. Come There's on. no way. Dude, I, I And I, I like, I don't know. You know what? I don't want to get into the fucking debates. <laughs> because people are like, of course I would watch the Friday the 13th with Pamela. <laughs> of course I would. Are you fucking stupid, Jay? Would you not? <laughs> would you fucking skip Halloween 1? Well, you know why I wouldn't skip Halloween 1? Because goddamn Michael's in it. <laughs> That's true though. You You're fool? not there's no Who fucking is the fool. No fu no lies detected, as the kids would say. No he cap. No cap. Heathens. <laughs> there's no cap at all. Oh, here's a good one, dude. This is this is this it's this is, this is a good one now. Come on. Warlock, the late great Julian Sands in Warlock for the 80s movie, and then for the 90s movie. Wes Craven presents, but don't get tricked by that. He did not direct it. No. Uh Wishmaster. Directed by Robert Kurtzman. I think Wishmaster is a fun movie. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think it's a fun, corny, B type of B, B movie type of thing in the 90s. It actually wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't great either. And there's no like goddamn amazing story here. And there's nothing about Wishmaster that's ever going to be in the echelons of the legends of horror icons or anything. I like wish that. you'd shut the fuck up. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. Did you record my wife? <laughs> uh, uh, but no, uh, while it's fun, and, and this is literally, uh, we're, I'm not grifting on Julian, uh, nothing like that. Uh, I always liked Warlock uh, and Julian Sands. I thought Julian Sands really was an incredible actor. I think he was a very good character actor, much like Bill Paxton was, in the fact that he could take on many roles and many different uh, shapes and be great in whatever he did. And in particular, I remember him from Warlock and and, and Warlock 2, uh, which he was even, I think, I mean, that movie is super corny, but a really good movie. I prefer Warlock. Uh, it, I do. I feel like if, you're, it, if this is like the battle of the B movies. And for me, Warlock is the more entertaining of the two because I thought Julian Sands was amazing. 
as as the warlock and, and he was very intimidating and he was very cool uh and he and he had a very uh, he had a very um pinhead sith lord type attitude about him and especially in the second one uh, yeah so it's it's for me it's warlock yeah i'm going warlock too i just watched this movie and actually i'm probably really bad luck you should all probably go away right now because i watched this movie like a week before julian sands uh he was, he, he, i think he'd been i think he'd been deceased for a bit right well no it was, it was a week before it, we even found out he was missing or whatever mm. and i was like damn who is that guy like i've seen him and stuff before and then i learned all about the wonder that is julian sands and great. how great he was because just because of how weird and strange and like sexual but like he has a fucking secret you know <laughs> like he could have fucking sold you every shirt at jc penny like if you went in there you know uh, but like uh, he was so good in that fucking movie and i the movie it, it does i think it's a little too long but yeah apart from that uh warlock was shockingly good it has that old school just very good 80s. gore too good gore yeah and then the vibe to it and, and i usually don't get into the mystical shit and all that stuff like they were trying to do with this one but the horror is still there and it's still freaky as fuck wish master is one of those movies that i always wished it was a little bit better i just like fucking i like it like i have a good time watching it but, yeah with the God. fucking with the with the cover of it with the the promise of it with the idea of the story it always felt like that movie should have been bigger it could have been better. gnarly yeah, then it was for sure. So I will go Warlock as well. And that, that gives us three for the 80s. So it's th- by the way, uh Julian Sands, in my opinion, best role was in Rose Red. I, I gotta rewatch watch it. It was so good. And by the way, in Wishmaster, I loved it. That one of my favorite scenes of the first one is when the girl was like, I wish to be beautiful forever. And he's like, Fine. And he makes her a fucking mannequin. I was like, <laughs> God damn, use a sly fuck. I love it. I need to rewatch that. I might rewatch it again soon. And then Wishmaster 2 was the best one. It's like, what do you wish? And he's like, I wish my lawyer would go fuck himself. And then the lawyer bids in <laughs> half. Did, and yeah. you can hear his ass or his dick going <laughs> into his butthole. I was like, Ooh. oh, shit. We, by the way, if you guys want to see uh, a Wham video that you've, that you've maybe never seen before, uh, the dudes from Bloodbath and Beyond in us, they came on our channel and reviewed the original Wishmaster movie. And we mm. came on their channel and reviewed Wishmaster 2. So there's Was a I Wishmaster. Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we both did. It. It's been a while. It's been a minute, it, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, like, no, I wasn't being disrespectful. I just totally forgot. It's been a long time. It's like, do you remember? Yeah. It was like on your kid's birthday. Your wife's like, it was such a beautiful day. And you're like, was I? Was I there? I think I was I drunk. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. No, no. Oh, that's really, just but, every day. I get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. By the way, that's not how it actually is. But yeah. Um, if that you want an extra wham video, so the '80s has three, '90s has ten. 90s is still winning, but we got not looking long. good. It's like Kentucky versus like every division two school, <laughs> like, <laughs> like Kentucky basketball versus like a division. No, not a division two school, just like a fucking, I don't know, whatever, like shitty basketball team, 16 seed. I don't know. So you guys might have been uh, from there. So North I don't Dakota, to Samsonite. Yeah, no, <laughs> Samsonite. Samsonite, Samsonite <laughs> State from North Dakota. <laughs> Samsonite. If you guys watch college basketball, I'd be like a number one overall seed, like beating the <laughs> fuck out of a 16 seed. Uh, we'll get to some of your all's questions uh, real quick for a minute, and we will go back into the list for sure. And I might show you my dick, you know, if you get lucky. Someone get June out of here. They're fucking. Yeah, dude. Them. I mean, where's our goddamn moderators? We. What's going on? What, no, fucking, June's asking I, for I, fucking feet pics, and I've asked people to do their them a favor and send some feet pics, and no one <laughs> is. And now June is very upset. I I think by the way I think someone already did because I went to click to ban them and it was like bitch you can't do that we have moderators uh, uh I I've not seen uh oh. but I'm sure we do uh but I just wanted to point this out that Orlando had a, an OJ Simpson slammer it said guilty or not guilty in an engraving or OJ in the slammer <laughs> of OJ in the slammer that's dude that should be fucking rare that should still be worth money today you know what's so funny uh, bringing up OJ I I remember. In the Arnold documentary, you guys got to watch the Arnold documentary on Netflix. So good, man. He mentioned uh, the fact that there there was a time, and well, James Cameron talked about this, that the idea was that O.J. Simpson was going to play the Terminator and Arnold was going to play Reese, and they were going to face off with each other. And that was the idea. And then James Cameron was like, well, O.J. Simpson and Arnold Schwarzenegger together, and it just doesn't sound right. So he met Arnold. Anyway, long story short, Arnold cuts back in at some point during the documentary and says, well, he couldn't believe that O.J. Simpson could play a killing machine. 
<laughs> and then you hear the cruiser laughing at you. It was so good. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny as fuck. By the way, mods are here in full force. Holly and Vinny and Mike White are here and they got oh, him. Man. It's just that this the these super chats were back. So we were seeing a previous version. I, so they already I, all right. I'm not I wasn't like taking a dump in the in the hey, thank you, mods. I wasn't taking a dump in their Cheerios. I just I, I saw I saw the a, fan? yeah I saw a fuck ton of that guy asking for feet picks and I almost took my shoes off and my socks and <laughs> sit one because I was like you know what I'm just gonna give that fucker what they want because they are just so convincing with their spamming. Van's supposed to be and here. then a common sense came in like I'm not getting paid for doing that. So <laughs> if they were super chatting over and over again and spamming a dollar each time. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of the Netflix docs, by the way, did American Gladiators make you cry? uh twice me too when the uh, dude's talking about talking the dads about, he was talking like about the, his father yeah and then we was talking about big boys don't cry yeah that was tough men dude. do yeah oh i was like this shit hit me dog damn it you handsome buffer brandon lee look alike <laughs> fucking laser, that dude did kind of, oh, that guy that guy was like half asian half uh half white oh yeah that I was think. not laser that was which one was that fuck what's that was a uh, nitro no it was nitro no, nitro yeah i think it was yeah. nitro yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, so, hey, we just gave you good hey two two good recommendations, man. On Netflix, the American Gladiator right. unofficial documentary and the Arnold Schwarzenegger official documentary, I guess. So they're both on there. Really good stuff right now. I'm also watching uh well, April wanted to watch it, so it's in the list. I don't know if I'll watch it, but I probably will. Anna Nicole Smith, the documentary, and then there's um for me, there's like something about video games. So Netflix uh got some good shit right now. You know, if you guys are, are interested, but definitely the American Gladiator one, man. Holy shit, it's so good. It really is a really good um, put together documentary. Five episodes, forty five minutes a piece, and they go through all of it, like the beginning, you know, how it started, each one of the the gladiators, the, the mainstay gladiators, how they got, you know, to where they were, and then it goes through the sex, drugs, rock and roll, how it was syndicated. Everybody was like making. They weren't making shit, by the way. They did actually, and and the director, that guy was a freak. But I kind of liked him because he was like, <laughs> I, you know, what I mean, he had tiny fucking hands, tiny. Yeah, hands. dude, it smelled like cabbage. Uh, but <laughs> he, uh, he, I loved him, dude, because he was like, if you're comparing, because American Gladiators in the back in the day was pretty much like the WWF, except in American Gladiators, contestants were actually competing. You know, it wasn't scripted. We don't know who's going to win, and there was money involved at the end of it. Uh, and 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 the director of the shows was like, if you're going to compare it to WWE, the gladiators were getting raped. Like uh, one of the uh, gladiators, um, I don't ice maybe or which one. She said that uh, we were. Oh, no, it was it was ice. She said I was making five hundred dollars an episode, five hundred fucking dollars an episode. And people were like, oh my god, you're on TV, you're on tour, we see you all the time. You're you must be living in a mansion. She said, no, I was literally getting five hundred dollars. A, 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 an episode and then they were doing merchandising but the problem is they signed a contract in perpetuity yeah because which they is didn't illegal know now. it was going to be a big show yeah dude here's the thing here's a here's a, here's a little uh nugget of truth for you sexies out there that maybe like maybe gonna uh, maybe you're gonna be famous one day do never never sign a fucking contract without your fucking lawyer like get a lawyer if they're gonna give you a contract get a lawyer to read that shit because you don't know what that fucking means yeah. You're like I, I, I'm poor, man. I'm broke. I don't, I don't know. I'm just gonna sign it on the fucking dotted line. Those fucking gladiators got so fucked. I felt so bad for Nitro, the one that that you cried at about. You know, big boys don't cry because yeah. he got to be a commentator. Yeah, and, and he was like having a good. You know, the whole thing was going well, and I was like, and he was like, well, hey, if that show was run right, it could have lasted 20 years. I don't yeah, know about it, that. It could have, but it could have because of American Ninja yeah. and all that shit that took off. Yeah, and I would watch American Gladiators now if it came on. But uh, yeah, for you '90s kids, man, you guys gotta check that shit out to see what these people's lives were like behind the scenes. While I was, it's it's a fucking great idea, by the way. Like, who thought of the idea? Like, we should go find the gladiators, these larger than life, like superhero looking people, and ask their stories because the you we know they have a show. Oh fuck, I would die, dude. That would be amazing. Dude, we could get them on the show because laser, uh, Ice, laser, Ice is laser. the one that went on TikTok, and she made yeah. a TikTok, and they were all excited. We should fuck, get them on the show, that dude. Shit. We should let's get them on the show and talk about the fucking the documentary. I want to, and I'm going to. Oh my and... god, dude! Would you guys like that? Imagine getting the American Gladiators well, on the show. Would you arm wrestle? <laughs> yeah, and talking about the documentary and getting their fucking. Oh my Let's god, that. dude! That's the next live interview right there. That's what we're gonna fucking do. That would be sweet, dude. Stamp it. Put it in your ass. Wade's Movie World says, "Hey guys, not to... <laughs> no, not too much one. disrespect. 
Oh, fuck my ass with a spoon. What time were you at? Shit, tit. I was right after that one. Okay. Um, hmm, Diarrhea, cha-cha-cha. It's this fucking June, man. Like, it's still on the old school. Uh, Jerry! Fucking Jerry! No, I read that one, too. Shit, fuck, fart, cock. I fucked your mom. Did you see the the, uh, the new Superman who they cast? Yeah, I like that guy. No, yeah, but he looks like the Wish.com version of Henry Cavill. If you look at him side by side, (laughs) they look alike, but it's like, oh, shit, that's the one that's like, you know, he's got... He's got a disease or something. <laughs> Something's wrong with him. He's not. He's. This is like before and after. Like, like this is like before in Henry Cavill, and then this is after I became a vegan. <laughs> yeah, he's basically the skinny version of. Yeah, uh, like of he's Cavill. like it's one hundred percent. From what I've seen him act, he was in Pearl. He's been in a couple of things. Like I think he's going to be good, man. I think it's a good choice for sure. But you're right. Yeah, but dude, why he did looks you just keep Henry Cavill? Right. Yeah. Because yeah, they didn't want everybody thinking yeah. about fucking, but still, I agree. Vernon John the Piper. I, I read son. that one too. Shit, fucking! You already read Jacobs too, didn't you? Nope. That, no, Jacob is where I stopped. Okay, Jacob, that's a big fucking super chat, Jacob. Really hey, appreciate Jacob. that, buddy. Thank you, man. He says I absolutely love chugging a beer with you guys and being able to talk to y'all for a sec was awesome. Hey, uh, all right, man. Yeah. Jacob made his first appearance on the on he the did. Patreon stream last weekend, and shit got it's getting. It's getting it's getting kind of hectic. <laughs> I've got um, the power. I <laughs> uh, says I love you guys and being there for that absolutely made my night. And I'll definitely be sure to pour my beer in a glass for the next. So yeah, he showed up with a fucking PBR can. He was like, ah, <laughs> hey man, I respect it, man. I respect the hustle and I respect the grind and I respect anybody with a PBR can in in 2023. It says fuck it. Yeah, so what? In my garage, I got quiet riot posters and half naked <laughs> girls from the eighty seven. <laughs> Fuck you. Quiet riot. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, Jacob's awesome dude. Hey, and by the way, he's talking about our little Patreon situation. That's what we do. We mm-hmm. have a good we have a chug con dude. You guys gotta check it out. Come on. It's real you guys crazy aren't if you guys aren't Patreon fan, check it out. Yeah. Yeah. And then as soon as you join See, and the Mike ten dollars here. Butt. Like I'll stretch my back, dude. I, like, I, I, got, I thought I you were making butt. I'm a, I'm a hey, <laughs> chocolate covered pretzel. <laughs> there you go. Chocolate covered pretzel. Uh, love you, Jacob, dude. You're fucking rule, man. It was awesome to have you there. It was awesome to see see your see your beautiful face uh, chucking from a can. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, Michael Parton says, "I'm super hyped for the Nun Two trailer, Murray." <laughs> Murray, <laughs> hey, Michael, you changed your profile pic. Look good, man. That's a good pic. You um, look like you're the backup guitar player for uh, Green Day that they like. They don't put the light on, but he's in the back playing. Like you actually look like that guy. It's yeah, he, or or a detective that says, "Sure, we're not going to use this in court." <laughs> uh, I, I yeah, I, I didn't know they were doing a nun too. So yeah, yeah, I wish they wouldn't. But oh yeah, this <laughs> week's uh, the Conjuring, the last Conjuring movie is this week. Insidious. Uh, yeah, Insidious. Yeah, the yeah. Red Door, the Fuck. one that they 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 showed every fucking like scary moment too already, and yeah. they had like a fucking interview with Patrick Wilson, and uh, and the and the kid grown up from Dalton. Mm-hmm. It's like, so what does it mean to you? What does it mean to you coming back to this house after all these years? What does it mean to you? <laughs> and he's like, Yeah, you we know, should put so, you in a junket. So, and have so what happened was uh, Patrick here. I love you, Patrick. <laughs> Patrick was like, You should come back totally. You should come back and like explore, you know, as an adult, like almost an adult, almost an adult, don't, right? And you go into college, right? We show that in the pictures and we show that in the, the trailer. And then Patrick, right? Patrick was like, Don't, you're so good. What are we going to do? Well, I'm going to go, like, dad goes, like, I mean, dad. Patrick Wilson goes into, like, a cat scat, right? <laughs> and then, like, a guy crawls up and scares the shit out of him. That's what I saw. It's such a <laughs> good thing. <laughs> that was pretty fucking good, though. I'm not going to lie. You should save that for a fucking No, character. I don't want to save that. I Because I, 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 oh. I, w- I would hope oh. that one day talk to Patrick Wilson. Did you get my fucking like, Starbucks? Are you making fun of my son, my on-screen son? <laughs> Do you know that I played an owl man in Watchmen? I fucked I fucked the uh, I fucked Malin Ackerman to the Jesus song. I fucked, <laughs> a, I fucked a lady on Mars when a nuclear holocaust was happening <laughs> in the background. You remember that scene though when they that were was, fucking in the spaceship uh, while Hallelujah was playing? <laughs> that was an awesome. Was I, do, I, I have a poster. I've never I've never felt so weird jerking off something all my whole life. <laughs> they both had great asses and they were smooth. Hallelujah. Uh yeah, that was a good time. Goddamn out, man. Um, okay, so uh, Splash God. He's really good at swimming, you guys. You guys got to see this dude in a fucking pool. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. He says, Jonathan Brandis would have been better uh, than Hayden Christensen as Anakin. He tried out for the part and didn't get it. What the fuck were they thinking? John, he, I didn't know that, dude. Holy shit. That will actually, yeah, 100%. I, I agree with you. Jonathan Brandis. I could think of 35 people who would have been better, too, than Hayden Christensen. Well, listen, Hayden Christensen got better by the third film. And then I know Mike has a city, yeah, but in Kenobi, the Disney Plus series, uh, he's not bad. I mean, you know, you barely really get to hear his voice acting. But I don't think that Hayden Christensen was a bad actor. I just feel like it was uh, some of it was just a poorly written part. Like if you listen to some of the fucking lines, like that, I won't lose you, Padme. Not like in my <laughs> dream. It's just really badly written. Like it just That's sounds very. Point. It's very corny. Uh, yeah. I liked him, I, and Jumper was terrible too. But I liked him in that movie with John Leguizamo. Uh, lights out on Eighth or whatever the fuck. Remember all the lights no, were going the out, vanishing on Seventh Street. The vanishing. I thought the vanish, and he did a really good job in that movie. I never saw. I don't know why I remember that title so fast because never saw. But, no, that movie. Was a, but I think that Hayden Christensen was a fine choice. I just think it was a really poorly written script. I bet that happens to actors a lot too. They get mm -hmm. they get shaded for doing good shit. Yeah. Child of the corn. He loves corn and he loves butt fucking. I mean, he loves vegetables. Yep. Martha Metz. Oh yeah, the bitch. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the bitch. <laughs> Pick the geese. Hyperactive. Lost in Highland Park area. She was half dead when I found her. What is that from? That was from Ace Ventura. Oh yeah, the bitch. Oh fuck me! In the he's talking about the dog, and she's like, "Excuse I know. me, I gotta, I gotta stop drinking. I gotta stop drinking." Yeah, dude, you my, got, my you got, you got like, shit, dude. you got Muhammad Ali shit going on. God, dude, I'm you, sorry. You're fucking crazy right now. You're crazy, <laughs> I, man. I, you're I shaking and fucking losing your memory. Stop. I was, I was watching that clip the other day from uh, Ace Ventura too. <laughs> She's oh, like, oh, yeah, the bitch. You should, you should try the finer things in life. And he goes, I think I will. And he punches the dude and he puts him on his back and he goes, rah, 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 rah. that soon. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and you must be the Monopoly guy. Hey, thanks. Do not back out. No, but I like that. Like, he's like, hey, Ace, do you have any more of that gum? It's like, that's none of your damn business, Dan. And I'll thank you for staying out of my business. <laughs> God damn, I love those. I feel embarrassed. Hey, I, I didn't not, realize well, that. you know what? Ace Ventura 1, Ace Ventura 2. Ace Ventura 1, Ace Ventura 2. Ace Ventura 1, Ace Ventura 2. Where are you at? You're going to say Ace Ventura 1, but dude, you got to give the respect and love for Ace Ventura 2. I feel like they're both good. Melissa, it's Ace. <laughs> I, I got it. They're both great. I, I you, will you really love animals, huh? If it, if it gets cold enough. Yes. <laughs> what do you call you? Saddlebags? <laughs> That kind of surgery can be done over the weekend. <laughs> oh, fuck. Dan Torres says, up, fellas? Either y'all watch anime, just watch One Piece's 1,000th episode. Truly mm. the greatest story ever told. Fucking epic. Y'all have any faves? I've never fucking I, seen I've never, an anime. I, I never seen it. Uh, never watched the anime. I, I watched the Death Note movie, but I'll tell you this. My third We watched the movie, not the actual anime, by the way. Right, right. We're not good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> That's a joke. But my 13 year old is fucking obsessed. Like she's in her room right now, binging fucking spirited away or like one of those things. And that's like, not Genshin, true. At all. That's a lie. All of it. He's only I making it up because he calls your anime obsession gay. I don't. That's all right. We, there's no negative connotation on no, gay. I, no, actually, truth is, me and Mike don't have the. you not good at that it. That really requires to watch anime because I mean it yeah. builds on a story and then like there's all this other stuff that goes on and. Me and Mike are too much like, I guess we, me and Mike are fucking morons for Michael Bay movies. Where's the big explosion? Yeah. Where's the big explosion? There's a lot of sex there in those things, though. I know that. Well, those anime things are pervy. Hey, Daniel, send me, send me a copy real quick. <laughs> send me your favorite <laughs> episode. Uh, send me your, your bonus. I guess jams. the closest oh, I ever came to watching anime, and I know it's, I know you're going to laugh at me, Daniel, because you're like, that's not even close. Uh, I watched uh, Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. <laughs> I remember. Fucking I, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I remember when that movie was coming. I do. I literally bought that from Japan. Like when I got the DVD, it was all written in Japan because I had to buy it on eBay and they shipped it to me from fucking Japan because I didn't know if there was going to be an American release. And I watched it and then went, they were speaking J Japanese and they had put the fucking subtitles, the actual English subtitles over the words are not over. Like they didn't do us, they didn't do the, um, What's the thing called when when the American will speak over subtitles. dubbing dub, dubbing. No, dubbing 
They didn't do dubbing. They just did the subtitles. And I, and I, I watched it. And then I bought the movie. Anyway, that's the closest I've ever got to anime. That's the closest I've ever touched its butt. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Like, I just, I know it's not for me. Like, I've probably seen a few minutes of it, but I should give it a chance. I should watch at least like one anime movie. Like, Mike's gonna start all of a sudden ditch the Hurley shirts and start wearing Death Wish. <laughs> <laughs> start wearing not like, Death, Death Wish. Uh, uh, what was that what it's called? What's that anime that we watched? I don't know. Uh, honestly, Death like, I go, to, I go to the place I buy my shirts is the same place the anime shit is as like Hot Topic. They got it all. It's, it's gonna go. It's gonna be called Horuko Beam. Come on, Morocco beam. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what my kids would call me being racist. I disagree with them. What do you mean? But that's, that's what they say. Racist. Whenever I whenever I do someone's voice, they're like, quit being racist. I'm like, I'm not being racist. That's weird. You should racist. You should have seen my mom outside of the Chinese buffet when we were going up. Ching tong, ching tong, ching tong. I'm like, mom, you can't fucking do that. You can't, you can't say that in public. I know, like, stop it. And she walked right up to the way. Ching tong. I'm like, mom, stop it. No, you mom, can't you do that. Said in public. <laughs> like i was generally embarrassed like, please stop i wish we had, wish we had a, an animated like thing where like a big stamp came it's like canceled <laughs> yeah, <I know>. like <laughs> canceled. like and, and don't get me wrong guys that i did not say i was paraphrasing someone else just now right don't fucking get me started jesus Christ. no the guy's name was ching chong apparently <laughs> that was fucking fucking the buffet up. he's wrapping it oh fuck anyways here's a lady eating a piece of corn <laughs> that's not corn what is that that's a severed alien dick that she's ready to suck it's like what is it though like what fucking pastry is going in her hot red lipstick mouth right now like, yeah what dude, there's a, her teeth are fucking beautiful too i know dude and like she got that bit of spittle like all right that, stop man spittle. back it up back it up let's, let's examine it <laughs> She got that weird, like, up nose, you know? Like, that. Like, ooh, shit. What is, what is I'm this? I'm not looking at you now. It's just stock photos on the side of my fucking... Well, what head. is it? What are they doing? She's eating... She's going to eat the paper, which is going to be upsetting. That bitch is drunk. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was... Yeah. In your bed? Uh, I wish that was oh, my Oh, just drunk pastry. bitches in my bed that didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah now we've done now yeah. we've done racism Brittany fucking... Frazier call it said stop yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> oh Christmas Eve in fucking July oh I hate um, this this is a stupid choice I don't like any of this this is, this is, <laughs> this is when it's burning um, this is like should I go work for Harvey Weinstein or R. Kelly which one is good <laughs> <laughs> which one will help me out the most uh, this is uh, honest to God. I, I, I'll just tell you right now. My pick is Urban Legend. I watched the burning. You and I reviewed the burning, um, and also we've had the burning after many herpes <laughs> yeah, simplex yeah, yeah. issues uh, in our lives. But it was just an athlete's foot. I was never. <laughs> <laughs> this dude jerked me off with his athlete's foot like dick, that, and like yeah. yeah, with his athlete, he he did me. He gave me a foot job, but he had yeah, athlete's. I got foot. some low trauma. Yeah, you know, it was good afterwards. I should have. I should have no fucking known. No I should have known. Um. So yeah, Urban the, Legend was good. I liked it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Burning Dude. It was just like for me, it was the classic <laughs> case of everybody loves it and reveres it because it's an old school '80s slasher and it has all those tropes too, and it's got sex and stuff. But to me, as a movie watching, I just felt like apart from a couple kills, it was really boring and poorly made. Yeah, it was. I really actually enjoy. I get a kick out of watching Urban Legend. I think there's some. There's some good actors there. There's some bad shit in there too, but there's some really cool storytelling. There's some interesting little moments in there. I just, I have a fucking blast watching Urban Legends. I kind of have to slog through the burning. So I would go Urban Legend. Oh, yeah, me dick. too. Hey. <laughs> don't, why don't you fucking pipe down? That's too many words. I don't, I don't need, I don't need you to write a book every time you speak today. All right. Okay. Fucking calm down. Okay. With, the goddamn you're not you're not chris stuckman <laughs> i didn't see uh, your face either uh, I, know. Uh, I i no, i would pick urban oh, i i think urban legend i i do agree i think it's boring as shit i think it's like watching fucking paint dry on on a sunny afternoon it's terrible like after you painted the fucking wall like how long does it take uh 24 hours why does this dude keep telling me to pee on the floor because he wants to see your wiener and he wants to drink your pee. And, and then, but the thing about the burning is, by the way, if you look at the cover, does that not look like a giant, like a titan that from the from the olden days of the Olympus <laughs> that just wants to chop those fucking trees down? Those trees yeah. are my way. 
<laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, I, I don't even remember the burning, but I, based on the cover, I probably was bored more so than Urban <laughs> Legend. Uh, I don't think Urban Legend is a bad movie. No, actually, it's a terrible movie, but it's better than the burning. So I'm hitting I'm the half pipe. I'm going to give it this weekend. Yeah, it, it's, the, it's the lesser of two evils here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have to defend myself about anybody in chat and be like, you dare talk shit about the burning? <laughs> I had it between my crotch <laughs> with my wife. I'll and I saw it in off, film, man. and I was loving it. I got I to go to pee God. really bad. All right, go pee. Go pee. Enjoy your pee-pee time. Go to. And I will show everyone my pee-pee while you're gone. Are you guys ready to see a little dick? <laughs> it's average size. It's a completely average size dick. I'm selling myself short. My wiener is totally normal. Is anyone still there? Holy shit, you are. That was... Really embarrassing. I'm never going to be able to get a job at Best Buy now. Daniel Torres says, Sup, fe- oh, fucking, we just answered that. God, I'm so stupid. Michael said, Japanese Super Sentai toys look better. Um, That does not surprise me at all. They probably fucking do. They probably fucking do. Holly, I hope your son's okay. Um, Thank you, Michael. Austin says, to clarify on my Titanic thing, it'd be cool to see you guys talk to 1920s people about Power Rangers, cage matches, Macho Man, basically, oh, the cream rises to the top. Um, basically, Ace Ventura with the fancy people, then jetpack off. Yeah, like show up, like you come from the future and be like, this is going to be hard to hear. All right. But it's like when people show up in that show from, it's like, this is going to be hard for you to hear. There's an iceberg. You're going to hit it. You're all going to fucking die. Years later, though, this is the funny part. These rich dudes will take a fucking like silo piloted by a fucking Logitech controller, um, and they will go on, and then and they will sadly perish as well trying to find you. And then, if this was an American horror story where everyone lives in the house after they die, they will join you, and then they can tell you about Macho Man and about the flash and Ezra Miller. And they'll just be sitting there playing their 1920s crusty fucking chess games. Like they've been playing for all these years. And they're like, I don't know what the, what is a movie? What is a film? What is this? What is this? Explain to me how popcorn works and um, why Jada Pinkett Smith's character in scream two is a complete piece of shit. And it's not a racist thing to say that it's just a human being being a piece of shit. And you can say that, explain that to me. And that's basically what me would be as a, Soul down there. There's a whole backstory to that. That was some inside baseball happening right there. Love you, Austin. Motionless Zombie says, hey, guys, Blink is playing in Dallas tonight, and I didn't have the fucking money to go. Can I get a Loomis and Chalice impersonation of Shredder doing going babies? Their babies are. From... I'll let Jay do his when he gets, <laughs> when he gets uh, a man. <laughs> so, I'm so stupid. Why would you fucking know all the things in the world? You can ask me. Why would that be the one thing? <laughs> this is so stupid, dude. Oh, fuck. Uh, Child's just like, uh, babies. They're, they're babies. Ah, turn it off. Uh, I don't even know fucking where to go with it, but I'll tell you this thing is, dude, you should have went, you should have went. Cause I've been following this tour way too closely, like a fucking stalker. And basically I'm going to a one here in like uh fucking just out about a week. And I'm so fucking jacked to the tits. I cannot wait. I'm taking my 13 year old. I'm going to cry. Like, seriously, I'm going to cry like a fucking bitch. Seeing my 13 year old with me at a blink show. Tom being there. I'm going to cry like a baby. I'm so excited. I can't wait. But I've been watching all the tours and stuff, all the shows from the Blink-182 concerts. And I have learned that for any of you guys, if they're coming to a city near you, apparently on the day of the show, they release new tickets. And you can get these seats that aren't the best, but they aren't super shitty. Almost behind the stage, up high a little bit. But they have these giant boards where you can see the show. And you're above it, so you can sort of see, you can see like half the stage, and then you can see the video monitor. So they're not the worst. And you can get those tickets uh, for like reasonable prices released on the day of the show. So if Blink's in your all's town, go fucking do that shit. And I hope maybe Blink will give me like a backstage pass for maybe getting one person to go do that. Probably not going to fucking happen. But I will get Jay to do that for you, Motionless. And I'm sorry you missed it, dude. I'm so fucking excited. But hey, the shows are all on fucking YouTube. People are filming them and shit. Um, so you can at least experience it from your home for sure. I'm driving like seven hours to go see him. And I, God, I'm so excited, man. I've been looking forward to it so much. It's all I'll talk about. I'll be like, volleyball, like, you know, I'm going to see Blink. They're like, dude, we fucking know. Shut up, dick. Maybe you should work on your fucking serve. 
Joe Valentine says, y'all ever see Watchers 1988? Corey Haim, your thoughts? You're that hoe over theirs? Uh, never saw it, dude. I'm sorry. I wish I could. I wish I had something to say about it. I'll ask Jay if he's seen it. Um, but I know Jay really well, and I know almost everything he's seen. So I could just tell you right now that he hasn't seen it. But if I'm wrong, I'll um, eat a pumpkin. I don't know. Fucking Frankenstein Studio, Jim Carrey voice. I made it. I'm late, but I made it. <laughs> there's, there's, Jim Carrey could fucking do anything. And it'll be fucking funny, funny as shit. Just like that line from Ace Ventura. I laugh when he does that. Where he's like, when he grabs the phone, he's like, Melissa, it's Ace. Just something about that. Uh, I made it. I'm late, but I made it. Uh, I fucking love him, man. Oh, here is the beautiful, glorious, red-bearded, fucking wonderful man who I've slept with seven to 12 times uh, that I remember. And his name is Mike White Jr. And he says, just popped in to say hello. I miss you, beautiful boys. The baby is asleep. I'm going to go make sexy time with my wife. Well, I'm jealous. While eating popcorn. Scrumby eggs. Beer on me. Hey, thank you, bro. Thank you. And I want to let you know, Mike, and I hope you go back to watch this. I do hope you go back behind me to watch this. Um, I don't know where I was going there. Fucking stop. Fourth of July is over, you fucking cunts. Jesus Christ. There's a designated holiday for a fucking reason. It is goddamn 10.01 p.m. at night. I'm trying to talk about children's movies and shit. In my childhood, piece of shit. You get that goddamn mechanical asshole out of here, you fucking hippies. They were lighting off fireworks. Um, while eating popcorn. Uh, yeah, what was I talking about, Mike? I started drinking Bush Light. I did. I know what Mike White is a purveyor of the Bush Light. And you know what got me, you guys, finally? What well, finally got me on Bush fucking Light is I was drinking Middle of Light for the longest time, but then I realized it was giving me a hangover, so I switched. And I'll just, like, you know, drink Bud Light to upset, you know, homophobic people and, like, you know, all, all that shit just for fun. But, no... I'll just drink whatever, but I have started drinking Bush Light, and the only reason I've done that is because, and I'm kidding about the, you know, that was a joke, please, but um, Bush Light is not that fucking bad, all right, and the fun part is, is every time you open a can of Bush Light, you can go, Bush, and it makes you feel better about your alcoholism. I love you, Mike White. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> What'd you do? Yes. Cough that come up. Too Mike White. Come. I knew it. Yeah, and he he said that he's gonna go. He's probably having sex with his wife right now as we're talking. Oh. If you read his comment, take pictures. Uh -huh. It's fucking hot. I like to think about it when I eat cod. Um, have you ever seen Watchers 1988 with Corey Haim? No, me either. I told you guys. I know what Jay's seen, and I know what I've seen. Because we butt fuck and we get sweaty when we do it. Yeah, I've never, I, I, I've never seen. It. By the way, dude, I found out like I'm gonna watch that tomorrow. By the way, 100. percent April's never seen Silver Bullet. Oh, so like that's a okay. good July, July. No, no, but here's I know, dude, it was sexy. Because here's the thing, she wants, she's never seen that. Uh, she, we watched the thing yesterday for the first. She'd never seen it. The the John Carpenter's the thing, which is fucking amazing. Blew her mind. Yeah, it blew her mind. And then I blew in her mouth. But here's the other <laughs> thing, too. On top of that, she so she wanted to watch The Howling because she's never seen The Howling. But then I was scrolling through werewolf movies and the silver bullet thing popped up. And I was like, you ever seen that? And she was like, because I, I thought she'd say yes. She's like, no, what is that? I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. I was like, we're watching silver bullet over The Howling. For me, it's the silver bullet over 100%, The Howling. 100%. Every day, 100%. Every day I agree. The Howling's fine, but it's not fun to watch. No. I think the I think that she, I, Well, I think the idea that the trans... Because she's like a huge fan of American Werewolf in London. Mm-hmm. And then, and then there was a debate about what's the better transformation scene, American Werewolf in London or The Howling. So she wanted to see that. Uh, but I was like, dude, you, you, like if you're going to watch a werewolf movie, it's got to be Silver Bullet every day of the fucking week. It just has to be. I'm, I'm in agreement with you there. Uh, one more thing to get to before we jump back into the list, by the way. Uh, Motionless Zombie requested that, that Loomis do uh, an impression of Shredder going, babies, they're babies, are from oh, yeah. TMNT 2. I know what he's talking about. Oh yeah, hold on. Well, bring it back up because I gotta read the I gotta oh, read the shit. line because I'm not I'm a shoot. I, I can't act. I have to have lines in front of me. I'm like Marlon Brando. <laughs> Give me the cue card. Um, babies, 
They're babies. Oh. <laughs> that was better than mine. That was way fucking better than mine. I can tell you that. All right, let's jump back to the list. Let's knock a couple out because I know we're losing some people because we're, we're, we're meandering. We'll get back to the super chats and I'll go pee in just a second. For now, though, I can take a look at this motherfucker. This is a song. Which one do you take? Do you take the 80s, which is don't you do 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 forget about me from Breakfast Club? Mm-hmm. Or do you go with the 90s Coolio Gangsta's Paradise? Catch me in the pistol smoke, fool. I'm gonna do you every one of you. Uh, On my be knees in the night, saying players in the street light. Been spending most of our lives living in paradise. Well, first off, Coolio looks like he put his dick in an electrical socket with that hair. Uh, <laughs> I would say 100%. I mean, it's not even just that, though. The cover alone is going to go to Don't You Forget About Me. That's a badass, amazing ass. Like, I know it's not the cover of the single, but it should be. Don't You Forget About Me is an awesome ass song, dude. Like, it's a great song. Simple Minds really nailed it. Uh, and it was perfect for that movie, and it, it transcends time. Don't you forget about me? Is like I'm like it, it can be relevant really in any decade. It's perfect. So can Kings's Paradise, though. <laughs> like only if you're talking about Joe Biden's hey, son. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I, I so I'll put this one to a vote for you guys because I, as much as I love, don't you? Do, 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 I think it's like I didn't even actually realize it was Simple Minds for some reason. I thought it was Tears for Fears. I know, that, it's yeah, well, they, yeah, they do kind of sound like, yeah, but like, yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like, don't you forget about me could have been a song anywhere, but Gangsta's Paradise was like that was the song every fucking middle school dance that everybody's like. Yeah, I know it's a pretty cool dance, but it's gonna pop off once they play Coolio. No, you can't dance to it. You just like stand there and like look depressed. Yeah, but you look at each other and you you rap. This and California Love were the two songs that kids huddled around the speaker at the dances to. I don't I don't know, man. I don't know if any movie in the history of the world was ever so closely t- like tied to a song as Gangster's Paradise was. So it's yeah. a tough one, but I, I'm gonna put it to a vote. I remember that you guys. that scene in that movie too, where uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's like promising them all these treats if they come to class and then that one dude that always sleeps he's like you better be for real and then he walks out and i was like god damn i've quit i'm like no i was just joking i don't have that kind of money <laughs> uh so what it was dangerous mind so dangerous mind like the movies like you can't even like obviously breakfast club's way better but gangsta's paradise was such a fucking hit you know i remember the, i remember the music video a lot more I, don't you forget about me I, I i feel like when i first heard that song though it was so magical like it was just it, it like it really was like uh, like the the song you know like when yeah. you hear certain songs you're like that's the song i don't know that's a tough one that's a tough one sure i'll put it to a vote for the final answer in the meantime <laughs> back to the video games oh, original super mario brothers oh. for the from the 80s on original nintendo or from the 1990s super nintendo's street fighter 2 that's both strong they come in, in strong and hot it's so strong, uh, I, dude. For me, it's the it's it's the Mario Brothers. It's got to be Super Mario Brothers. Like I, that was the first game I, I remember playing that game as a kid, and then uh, getting addicted to it, and then playing the Super Nintendo uh, Super Mario Brothers, and then playing uh, Mario World. Uh, it was I mean, no, it, it was Super Mario World with the Super Nintendo, and then uh, yeah, dude, and I, Super Mario Three is probably for me is, is the superior mario brothers also 80s by the way yeah but i think that mario brothers like dude like it's for me like it's the halloween of video games like you know what i mean like it, it's the it's the one that really started it all it, like it's the one that people were rushing out and and buying and, and getting addicted to the video game industry and, and the consoles street fighter 2 fucking awesome dude really cool but i was a mortal Kombat guy all the way so Street Fighter 2, while fun, it never really held my attention like Mortal Kombat, but still a great game. Dude, look at that fucking how sweet that cover is. What's that dude's name? I know it's Ryu on the bottom. That's Ryu, uh, Blanca, and, and Chung Blanca. I was thinking Brazil, because you had to go to Brazil to fight Blanca, right? Like, you had to fly. I think so. It was like, and you go to Brazil when you go to fight him. But, yeah, dude, I, like, I, I'm, I'm I think curious. I'm wrong. That's Chung Lee. That's not Chung Lee. That Chung Lee is the bad guy in Bloodsport. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, that's Ryu on the ground no the and girl she's oh i don't remember her name i just remember she's like what the fuck's her name? i mean i don't know <laughs> um but no i so 
I will say that there's no doubt what's more important to gaming is I mean it's Super Mario Bros. Right? Like like duh. like is the is the game of all games. So I would say that for sure. I will go just because just because I'm interested in seeing what everybody's opinion is because these two games were so important for all that stuff. I'll put it to a vote. And because mainly Super Street Fighter 2 was one of the first games on Super Nintendo I actually got. Like, I think I had a couple games. Maybe you let me borrow some or something. Yeah. But I didn't actually have, I never had a new game. Like, I never bought a new game. By the way, the girl's name is Chun Li. Chun. Oh, so it was close. Yeah. You were close enough. But like, I, uh, someone at a, at a birthday party at like a fucking Chuck E. Cheese's or something got this for me at a birthday party. And I'll never forget getting that exact case and like looking at it and like that. And they were like 60 bucks, dude. Like they were expensive back then too. I'm pretty sure. But yeah. like looking at that and it was like such a cool feeling to actually own that and have that. And I was so excited about it. So nostalgia reasons, I'll pick street fighter two just so we can put it to a vote to see, but you're right. I mean, there's no doubt super Mario brothers is a bigger fucking deal you know yeah dude um, i mean like yeah and and then for me mario 3 was the was the uh was the goat i mean the, the magic whistles the layout mm -hmm. the design i mean for me mario 3 but i remember playing mario 1 super mario brothers and it, like it came in with the package duck hunt and i had the gun yeah some good shit right there good times yeah, right there that fucking amazing times in the case of breakfast club and coolio dude it's fucking tied 50 to 50 right now so I'm waiting the first the first fucking person to vote one or the other. I'm I'm gonna pick it. But right now, Breakfast Club, don't you forget about me and Coolio Gangsters Paradise is wow. tied at 50% with 84. What a votes. battle we have. Someone someone change it. Someone you can oh just change breakfast clubs wins 51 to 49 percent. I feel like that I feel like that is a strong decision, and I feel like your name will be remembered in the Jedi Knight Halls forever. <laughs> um <laughs> good for all you. Right. Which game? I'm gonna put this one to you guys now. Which game? Uh, Super Mario. Well, no, I, I, oh, you're you're putting it to them anyway because we decided it was Super Mario Brothers. No, I agreed with you that it was, but I picked Street Fighter. Like, even though I, oh, I agree that you was can't more play important. games like that, my god damn, dude. <laughs> uh, but moving on, Mike's like no. the lawyer from Primal Fear. He no, might be guilty, but I have, to, I have to defend him. You can't tell me what to do. Uh, 80s versus 90s. On the 80s side, we've got Arnold with Commando. On the 90s side, we've got Arnold with True Fucking Lies. Yeah, is, but they were all bad. Yeah, uh, dude, it's, a, it's True Lies. I mean, come on, man. Uh, James Cameron once again knocks it out of the park with Arnold. Uh, like, it, 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 who can forget about Jamie Lee Curtis and that? Fucking dance! Ooh. Holy shit! Do it dude. slow. My Do it. goodness, gracious. sexy. And they were navy blue, so she was DTF for sure. Uh, <laughs> and and even Arnold was like, "I didn't know my wife looked like that," which happens usually when you're drinking a lot and you're like you're sober and you're like, "Damn, my wife's kind of hot." But yeah, dude, it's true lies. Uh, Commando's fun and, and it's an easy ass movie. But I feel like Commando was the answer. Like, uh, and if you watch the Arnold documentary on Netflix, I feel like we're getting paid to plug this documentary. <laughs> but if you watch the Commando or the, the 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 Arnold documentary, they mention Commando that it was pretty much the uh, the answer to Stallone's Cobra. Like they were competing with each other really hardcore, back and forth. Like how many people do I kill? What's my thing or whatever? Uh, so yeah, I think for for me, it's uh, True Lies. True Lies was like kind of like the Bond type of situation with arnold in the yeah. lead and tom arnold's fucking great too as his best friend i mean so you had a little bit of the comedy with twins and then you had the action the over-the-top action dude come on yeah i'm gonna go with you on this one for sure i think it's true lies i do fucking have a heart like a, a really soft spot and, and you stay around long enough you'll find it i got a couple hard ones too but no i got a real soft spot for commando for sure because just that opening with that that tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick, like that fucking music yeah. and then the daughter and then the ice cream he gets eyes. So, <laughs> yeah, and also uh, Bill Paxton yeah. has the used car salesman. Oh yeah, fucking amazing in that scene. And then them feeding the deer and like you know, but there's no doubt. As much as I love Commandos, like let off some steam, Bennett. Um, and how great he was and the bad guy was in that for sure. Uh, I feel like lies, well, it's just uh, a better movie. Yeah, and, and Commando. I feel like um, it, it it was just another Arnold. Like I'm big and bulky and badass. And true lies, he had to actually act a little bit more. Like he got a chance to actually expand yeah. into comedy and do a little bit more with with his acting ability, which he is a good actor. So I did enjoy that. 
Uh, but I commando. Well, in commando, he had the one liner. He's like, "You remember what I promised to kill you last?" It's like, I "Yeah, lied. you said I lied." <laughs> And then, yeah, yeah, but and also like in true lies too, like that the, even the the horse chase scene through the, the yeah. city or whatever, like you said, Tom Arnold with the, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, dude. That, no, that's that's so just hilarious. Yeah. yeah, and the the bathroom fight scene, like True Lies, is one of those movies. Every single well, time ever... you you watch it, you you you're fucking watching it, and you're going, "Fuck, I forgot how good this movie is." It's, you forget about it. Tom Arnold reminds me of like something that you and I would do, like try to like help our friend, like not think that it's the worst situation. <laughs> like when they were spying on Jamie Lee Curtis and, and she falls into his lap and he's like, maybe she's sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Arnold's like, maybe she's sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking great movie. Dude. Yeah. True Lies wins that one. So we are in agreement. True Lies takes that one down. I got a pee. I got to take pee, pee, and pee. Then in uh, the meantime, we're at 9.39 PM with Colton Candler. Colton, all right. And on while there. you find that, I will just go ahead and say I fucking agree with him. Audrey Plaza say? would kill it as the new Pamela Voorhees. That would be fucking amazing. I think. Who? I think Audrey Pla Aubrey Plaza. Oh, she's yeah. fucking hot and dangerous. Yeah. Um, yeah, Colton. Yeah, that. Th yeah, thank you so much, man. Um, I that would be a very interesting um situation for us all because you'd be like, at first, I'm I'm unsure, and now I'm like attracted but i'm scared at the same time i like it yeah she wouldn't be bad but she's almost too hot you know she's almost just so hot want to touch the heidi hot that it just doesn't work but i guess maybe i don't know man um it's a good choice i mean it's it's interesting but yeah uh moving down through here uh, Eddie Chase says, good job on Scream Season 1 review. I saw that in Season 2. You're going to do Season 3. I didn't see that. Let me know if it's semi-decent. Semi-decent. but Much love. Uh, thanks, man. Um, did I do that? I don't Did I? I don't know. Did we do that together, Mike and I? Did we review that? I think we did. If so, I will not be a part of Season 3. I will not! I didn't mean to get aggressive, but I don't want to. I don't want to watch Scream on. I don't watch the TV show. I just don't want to do it personally. Uh, Vinny, hey, the legend, the myth, Vinny C. Uh, he's a pedantic, pontificating, pretentious bastard, a belligerent old fart, a worthless steaming pile of cow dung. Figuratively speaking, great liar, liar quote. Vinny C, know what up. He knows that he can bring that random quote in here, and we know what he's talking about. Liar, Liar, one of Jim Carrey's best movies ever is done. We agree. Vinny C, for sure. I definitely agree with you. I think, are we cut up? Oh, Michael Parton says, uh, wieners are a few of my favorite things. I know I didn't sing that in probably the way that you want it. I don't know how it was supposed to be sung, but I did my best for you, Michael. Uh, Robin ba Barker, I'm sorry, says, Hey, Mike and Gay, <laughs> coming in there hot with those jokes. Have you seen the recent interview with Rob Zombie on Howie Mandel's podcast? He goes more in depth with how chaotic making the Halloweens were. Yeah, um, actually, I didn't watch the interview, uh, shitty Barker. I, I remember... Uh, my wife told me about it and uh, yeah, listen, here's the thing about it. I agree. There was a lot of problems with Halloween uh, and it was definitely crazy, but I feel like in that particular interview with what, how it was described to me that with how Rob Zombie was delivering it was very much so that it was, um, he was making excuses specifically involving Halloween too, like he was like the Akkads were like, write it this way, do it this way. I don't want to do it that way. Like I'm a victim. I was just doing, you know, I was, I was in an impossible situation. Not really. What, how I feel it went down was Halloween one, the Rob Zombie Halloween one for 2007 didn't go over with everybody as well as he wanted. So he was just done with, with doing any more Halloween movies. They contracted him again for Halloween two. I think it was because he did sign a contract and he had to, he had to come back and do it, uh, which is shitty, but they, you know, it, you signed it, man, you signed it. Uh, you signed that little piece of paper and 
he had already had a movie that he was developing, and he actually pretty much said that on the Joe Rogan podcast. He already had a movie that he was writing, which is why Tyler Maine has a beard, long hair, all that shit. And he's just like, all right, well, I'll just incorporate my new movie that I was already going to do into this you know, Halloween movie. That's what I feel like what happened. And it was kind of like a middle finger to the producers and the executives that were forcing him to abide by the contract that he had signed. That's my opinion. I mean, again, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't know Rob Zombie. I've never met him. I've never talked to him. But in my opinion, I feel like it was very much the way that Halloween 2, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 was shot. It was, if it, if it didn't have Halloween in the title, you could, like, it, it feels like it has nothing to do with Halloween. You know what I mean? And he already had a script. He was already working on something else. He incorporated it in there because he had to or he'd get fucking sued. And then he made a, you know, unfortunately, a really shitty fucking Halloween movie, in my opinion, in Mike's opinion. But <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that shit, dude. I, I, I don't buy that he didn't. Uh, also, uh, Robin says, uh, had a zombie experience uh, been more positive? Where would, if you like to see a potential Halloween three go? I mean, yeah, if it had been more positive, I, like again, I don't, I don't, I think that Rob Zombie is a good director. He's not a good director. He's a good visionary. Like he can see scenes. Like he can. He's a great. Um, I don't. Uh, he can see things the way that a fucking psycho could see it. I don't know. Like the way that he sees shots or the way that he films is awesome. And I would love <clears throat> for that to carry over into storytelling because I feel like that's where he's weak on. Um, and it, it, like my, you know. Perfect example, Halloween 2, the first 25 minutes of that movie in the hospital are fuck, is fucking amazing. It's some of the best Halloween stuff I've ever seen. And then it just devolves into this unicorn butt-fucking ghost of my mom, Michael Myers, walking as a hobo through the streets of Philadelphia, having a soundtrack behind him, that talking about how sad his life is. And you're like, what the fuck is this shit? So if that had not existed and, and Rob Zombie had been more... Uh, interested in making more Halloween movies as far as like where he would have gone with Halloween three. I don't know. I, I think uh, I definitely don't think he would have killed off some of the main characters around here. I don't think Laurie Strode would have been such a obnoxious shithead. That is going to be the next Michael Myers and that Loomis wouldn't have died. I think that Halloween three would have dealt with more with uh, coming to terms with more so than what they did in, with, with the PTSD in the second one. And, I think uh, Halloween 3, as far as uh, Rob Zombie produced Halloween 3, I, I think uh, what I would have liked to have seen is more the viciousness that they started with with the beginning part of the uh, the hospital scene with Michael. That's what I would That's what I would want to see. So I, I saw this. I imagine that you got to when I was gone, but I couldn't help but see the super chat that was on there for the, uh, uh, <laughs> the liar liar thing, which made my fucking... <laughs> He's a pedantic, pontificating, pretentious bastard yeah <laughs> that yeah that was, that was some good shit right there and i was like Vinny knows the score he can come here and say those random things and we know oh yeah uh uh what the fuck what, what time what time tape are you at uh i just got to uh austin at 1004 okay sweet titties from my Man i don't know what that means jay i apologize milk milk <laughs> does a body good uh yeah, so i told you fright night was in there somewhere again this is an easy fucking one for me. 80s Fright Night versus 90s Dr Bram Stoker's Dracula. But I feel like for the audience, it's it's it may be. I know we got roasted on this. I, I we did like a, a Friday Night Fights or something, and I hate Dracula, dude. I hate I Bram too. Stoker's Dracula. I think it's so fucking bullshit. It's so like over the top dialogue. It's trying to be something it's not. It's just so boring to me. Gary Oldman looks a razor blade full of blood and like he has an orgasm. I mean, don't get me wrong. If it was Keanu Reeves. Uh, and then it's just like a weird, I like say is the castle far. Like it, it tries to be this like very artistic ballet type of play or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why not just gets it going? It gets it going and it feels good. You got some eighties vibes to it. Of course. Right. You got like a very simple story. You're already involved. You're already ready to find out what happens next in the next chapter. And Dracula, like, all right, well, the, is there an interlude? Because I'm fucking bored. 
<laughs> can I go get a snack? Can I go get a corn? snack and a fucking beer to get through the rest of this bullshit that my <laughs> wife drug me to? Anyway, it's Fright Night, dude. Come on. It's Fright Night. God it's damn. Fright Night. And look at the poster, for God's sake. I have that yeah. poster in my bedroom. I look dude, at it a, every night. It's <laughs> a sick poster. It really is. Uh, but, like, honest to God, like, I... I I would love to know. I may put it in the vote just to see what you guys think about it, just for fun, because I I know you and me both hate Bram Stoker. There, there's a very dude, big pro Dracula uh, fan base around. Yeah, and, and like you and I have this. I've tried to watch that movie I seven can't. goddamn times, and I every can't. time I'm like, this is shitty. This fucking I, sucks. yeah. I just think it's bad. Yeah, it's so boring. I was like, I, I don't. It's like watching this old dude try to get fucked. You know what I mean? Like it's like the whole fucking movie. It's so stupid. But Fright Night's fun and it's '80s and it's a blast. And Jerry Cambridge or fucking Sands Dusky. How do you fucking say it? it's not Jerry Sands Dusky? It's fucking. That's Whoa, not, that's not, yeah. You no, don't want that one in your. No. Film. By the, the way, Detective if you look at Dracula, Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula on the far right, does that look like Elon Musk? <laughs> the main thing. Just yeah. Fucking on the main uh, cover of Dracula. Yeah, look at, go down. That. Look, look, go down. Oh shit! That on looks the, like uh, Elon Musk, a little bit like an <laughs> like an ancestor of Elon Musk. <laughs> Which one on the far right or the on far, the far left? right? On my yeah, my yeah. right yeah. Oh, Keanu, yeah, yeah, Keanu, <laughs> Keanu looks like fucking Elon Musk. It's like Ezra Miller and Elon Musk fucked. It had the world's worst. It baby. does. It does look like Ezra Miller too. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Friday Night wins that one. Another one for the '80s, which it is catching up. Five for the '80s right now. Twelve for the '90s. Uh, we will go a little bit faster on these to make sure we get through them all. I'm not sure how many that we have left. In the case of Super Mario Brothers versus Street Fighter, as expected, Super Mario Brothers 77% to 23%. I agree. And, I agree. and we don't even need to put this one to a vote because it looks like the crowd, for the most part, actually does agree with us that uh, Fright Night is the superior hey, vampire Hey, all film. right. I thought you Good guys would fully pick Dracula. We did. We did. Oh, this because is dope. No, dude, this I mean, was... we did. We did some, and everybody was like, "You guys are complete assholes. You guys don't even understand what vampires are." Yeah. Well, because we tiered it and we put it in "Sucks My Butt Steve" oh, or something. Right. I think this is fucking, dude. This is nightmarish right here. This is on the '80s side. You have RoboCop. On the '90s oh. side, you have Teenage Mutant Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles original film. What the fuck? Teenage Mutant Ninja Power. Fuck, dude. Ninja Power. Why do you do yeah. this, Nitri? You want me to die, Nitri? <laughs> Why do you do this? Why do All you right, do fuck, dude. I gotta go with my first. I got first heart and fart, dude. I have to. I'm sorry. The cover's too fucking cool. It was. I never seen nothing like. It. I never seen nothing like it. Fuck me. Like I felt like that dude in the gas station when I saw it. Fuck me and start shooting at it. <laughs> Drop it. RoboCop, dude, it's RoboCop all day long. It's got to be RoboCop, part man, part machine, all fucking cop. Give all me dick. a break. Looking sexy. Look at the lights reflecting off of that helmet. The turtle's looking good over there. I like that. I want to hang out with him, eat pizza, party, and shit like that. But, dude, RoboCop, <laughs> if that man's driving around the streets at night in Detroit, there's no cops in Detroit now. But if there were, <laughs> I would take RoboCop any day of the week for sure. Dude, look at that. And, and, and the, Super sexy. he goes, what are you? Because you're going to be a one bad motherfucker. Not only does it have a great <laughs> fucking like a cheesy atmosphere to it, but it's poking fun at the over lavish lifestyle of the 80s and shit. Like it's a great political commentary, but also an amazing acting performance by Peter Weller and all the all the cast surrounding him. Dude, this is a once in a lifetime type. Of, it, for me, it's like it, like it's on the same level as Terminator. As far as like something you've never seen before, like yeah, and, and even Peter Wells was like, it's got to be stupid, right? It's Robo fucking cop, and it yeah. turned out to be such an awesome uh, commentary on on the social climate of the eighties. I think that it, dude, and just like I mean, just don't they just look sexy next to each other? Like, don't they just fucking like this is a double feature? These yeah. two party together, and it's the greatest fucking part. It's Project X. Like, cool. dude, there's they're just there's looking a midget at those. in the oven. You gotta let him out. <laughs> <laughs> These circus midgets cannot handle their booze. Uh, but dude, they just look so pretty together. I mean, just look at it, just take it in, breathe it in, touch so your good. dick. Like, it's so good. I'm gonna go Robocop as well. Uh, I think it's just a better movie, it's a better film. Uh, and that's hard to say because I mean, TMNT like 1990 is, is a fucking yeah, great, it, it's a good movie. Like, it's it's, a master, it's, it's a masterpiece. It takes its material serious. Those fucking Jim Henson hints in uh practical effects were beautiful it's an amazing film i want to put it to a vote just to see what you guys think but i, I do go robocop as well i just well, 
I feel like it, DMNT, they did their best to get to the actual source material where they were going to try to go rated R. Because if you guys read the comic books that came out in the 80s, the TMNT comics came out and it was a lot darker. Like they killed, they killed Dracula, they killed Shredder like within the first few uh, um, uh, comics, and like Leonardo or somebody decapitates him. Like it's fucking yeah. gnarly. But dude, there's something about Robocop. Dude, it also has. Remember that dude gets all melted by the fucking acid and shit, and then and then like and then he was like, uh, oh my god, dude, and then Robocop is like, madam, you have suffered a shock. I will notify <laughs> EMS. And then and then dude, there there's also like. In Robocop, there's a moment where he's like, remember, he remembers his wife, and he goes to where they used to live. You imagine the, the fucking crazy powder that would be released in your head if you finally realized that you were like, you're, you know, a ghost of what you used to be, and you see your wife and your child. Like, they the handled worst. this so, you, this is like what the remake was trying to do. Yeah, and they did this shit in the '80s perfectly. They captured the cool. struggle and the and the the torture that is Robocop. With practical effects, like I, it'd be your I mean? worst. It'd actually be your worst fear because I think one of the things about like if you died, like if you died and left your family behind, like it would be so sad. But like a part of it is like you wouldn't be here to experience. Well, you're a ghost. You. You're a fucking ghost, right? And this, like, you come back and you actually you're not who you were. You basically have died, and now you have to watch your family suffer. It's mean as shit if yeah, you well, think they, about it. Yeah, they, they do. They kind of follow up on a Robocop too. It's like, touch me. Yeah. And then he goes. Like, then he's like, "They made this to honor him." And then he's like, <laughs> "Your husband is dead." I and do like, like the. Oh, oh. I'm like, you didn't <laughs> think that was real, like, God damn! And then you know what? But Murphy wasn't filmed, and he remember he watches her walk away and cry. Yeah, dude. Ugh. I mean, you imagine the, the the hell you live in that suit. Your dick is gone. Your balls are gone. Your legs are gone. Your your stomach is everything. You're just a fucking face yeah and not even a good looking one yeah you just put a dick in my mouth i guess I can't even reach a <laughs> vagina even with my metal that. like I, I, I can't get to it <laughs> uh but no like dude the chat's fucking hilarious by the way movie juice said splinter <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a good one splinter. and then uh merlin nuff said april you're fired click and we were like i have message for you miss o'neill oh yeah Shut. No, it's like April. April. I'm sorry to say this, but you're fine. That's when her phone was like the answering machine was dangling by the fire. Remember the the and, and it's like uh, right I hate to say this, but you're fired. Yeah, but uh, I remember that scene when when they all got. I I kind of I remember crying when I was a kid when they all like pray and shit, and they, then fucking like Yoda Splinter yeah. rises up to the flames. He's like, <laughs> I am proud of all of you. <laughs> it's so it's such a close one like i agree with jay my pick would be robocop but it's one that's so close that could go either way and it's such a heavyweight we did put it to a vote so we'll see what they say about that in the end but um i feel like yeah, i feel like our tagline should be what shredder says to everybody's like you are here because the outside world rejects you <laughs> <laughs> we start a fucking foot clan yeah. oh shit yeah it's just beautiful to see those two movies together and i'll be honest dude if you put tmnt2 secret of the ooze up here i would actually pick that over robocop i just Play. i like it's you're my crazy. favorite i love you but you're close it's my favorite jim it's my favorite TMNT, yeah two is, is great secret of the ooze is some good shit right there <laughs> dude said you gotta know what a crumpet is before you know what a cricket is Oh shit. Okay. Oh, so, Jose right. could say go back. Tell me. You didn't pay money for this. <laughs> Damn. Oh, uh, oh, fucking shit. What does that look like? Look like a giant turtle in an overcoat. <laughs> it's your first time in New York. On the 80s side, we got Tango and Cash. Mm. On the 90s side, we got Demolition Man. Two Stallone team up movies. One with Kurt Russell, one with Wesley Snipes. Tough picking steve Nickens. i don't want to decide now this is like asking do you ready are you ready to pull the plug on your favorite aunt <laughs> no. uh, i don't I want to do i don't want to uh for me personally uh dude i got oh fuck dude i can't <laughs> don't you it's feel like, like you're picking favorite children yeah dude it really is it's like it's like i have two puppies and i can only <laughs> afford to keep one so I gotta send the other one back to fucking PetSmart, <laughs> where it's probably gonna be euthanized. And I know it's gonna happen, and they're not no one's gonna adopt it and they're gonna hate it, and it's gonna get like shot with a needle and go to sleep night night and wonder where I was. <laughs> See how sad I made that? I did that I on purpose to make I'm you just feel the weight. 
I'm just being quiet because I don't want to fucking pick, dude. Like I don't want to fucking I don't, pick. I don't either. I can't. I got nothing. I can't. I can't I cannot, fucking do it. I don't want. I don't want to. I'm it's done. too mean. It's, I feel wrong. Right, you you motherfuckers decide. Uh, yeah, let's put it to a vote, dude. You I can't fucking do it either. I'm not I can't, doing it's, that. it's the hardest I, one I've ever. I ain't seen. doing it. I'm gonna fucking do it. I'm fucking do it. In the case of the last one, though. Uh, meanwhile, uh, RoboCop or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Jay and I both picked RoboCop. You guys are picking Ninja Turtles 51, mm. 52 to 48 percent. Wow. Turtles. Okay. All right. I like that dynamic, sexy, twist ending. M. Night Shalomon <laughs> coming in and saying, Hey, what's going on? I love that because I thought for sure you guys would pick Robocop because I thought you had balls. <laughs> but yeah, I love it, man. That's you've been fined one demerit of the keeping not cursing. <laughs> I don't, don't you can't influence that. But hey, and that's what I'm talking about. Demolition man, tango and cash, dude. What the how do you do this? I want you guys to decide, okay? We put the burden on your fucking shoulders because yeah. I will yeah, not. What's your fucking boggle, bro? <laughs> my boggle. Don't you have somewhere to be? Remember when he said that? It's like your boggle is like my boggle. <laughs> And he's like, he was like, be, back on Monday, like, we called it the hunka hunka. He's like, be well. I was like, be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you got to remember Tay on Cash, dude, by the way. But Rambo is a pussy. And he <laughs> shot that fucking thing and cocaine poured out. And then Hunter Biden ran up and scooped up the evidence. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. It's it's new. I haven't it's, eaten yeah, any it's part funny. of it. It's but funny. By the way, I, I will say, uh, admit, do, the one scene I always remember from Tango and Cash, I don't know why. Remember that scene with Kurt Russell? Because he's like a, like, he's just a dude, man. Remember he gets a sandwich? Like, he gets a sub, and he, like, pulls it to his apartment, and they're, like, squirting with, sh like, squirt guns. And he's like, ah, you fucking idiots. <laughs> and the kids, and he's like, gets that, and he's eating the sandwich. Like he don't care, and then you you have the contrast with Sylvester Stallone. He's wearing the banker suit. Yeah, oh, um, and everybody's like, it's like, it's like, what kind of cop? He's like stock market or whatever it was. But I also love that that scene when 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 uh, uh Kurt Russell comes comes home and that dude's in his apartment, and then like that that whole fight scene was great. But then when they're in the fucking courtroom and he's like, it <laughs> like uh, uh Sylvester Stallone <laughs> sitting there all like proper and shit, and then Kurt Russell, Russell stands up and he's like, you know, I just want to say for all you fine people, like this. This fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. <laughs> and it's like order, order. It's fucking such a great movie. And He's then like, that one broke, dude. He, and then they're just like, you broke that jaw. Yeah, you know that like, fucking dude with that huge jaw. Yeah, my arm, my nose, and my jaw. <laughs> That's the way he said. It. He's like, my arm, my nose, and my jaw. And then, but it was so cool, dude. What I loved about this movie is, as much as 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 Kurt Russell and uh, Ortega and Cash hated each other, when they when they put him in that in that thing and they started electrocuting him. And the other yeah. one's looking up at the other one. He's like, Aah! and he's like, God damn it. I can't take it. That's my friend. And like, you could see that they're in anguish watching the other one. suffer. they respect like, one another. Yeah. Yeah. It was so cool until like, but then uh, you got, but then you have, the, you have Wesley Snipes and Stallone. And right. like, I mean, God damn dude. Stallone had chemistry with both like badass chemistry with both Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> well and also dude like fucking uh and, and demolition man like dude it was so fucking they, they did go they shot for the moon with that one because you had like future taco bell and everybody's like what do you mean this is we're getting the fucking the future it's like taco is like no actually the dude the franchise wars uh the the lone restaurant taco that bell. lasted was talk so now taco all bell. restaurants are taco bell <laughs> and dennis leary in that movie eating fucking rat burgers i you loved know? it it's like, this is a rat burger. This is a rat burger. <laughs> it's like, I don't care. Oh, and yeah. then this, yeah. the sex scene with him and uh, Sandra Bullock that was, was, so weird. was fucking yeah. wild. And I, I don't blame him. Like, what am I going to fuck you virtually? I mean, you're right in front of me. <laughs> you're Sandra Bullock. I want to touch them tits and get in there. The what end the fuck are you talking about? I'm going to do this virtually? <laughs> and then, like, he, I wanna... uh, yeah. Dude, I think that, but it was, uh, I loved it too because, like, Demolition Man actually had a lot more, it, it said a lot about society. In the nineties, more than people think, where and it, like maybe it was a maybe it was like a little bit of a fortune teller, like virtual yeah. reality and like not being connected to each other anymore and being more removed. You know what I mean? Like they kind of yeah. like nailed it a little bit. And corporate takeover in, in a lot of ways, where corporate America is, I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I feel like they did a really good job. Demolition Man has a lot of levels to it. 
Yeah, Demolition Man's kind of like if Paul Verhoeven made a movie, but he wasn't on any drugs. Like yeah, he was kind of yeah, calm. Like, he was, he know? was, yeah, he was stone cold right out of the rehab facility. <laughs> yeah, this is my, this is my normal movie. All right, so we're gonna let you guys vote on that one as we move forward. Another mm. horror pick on the '80s side, you have Poltergeist. On the '90s side, you have the people under the stairs. You dare bring this in front of me and ask me to judge? <laughs> Don't you like, have somewhere to like, go? I feel like Pontus Pilate. Don't I wash my hands kill. of this man's blood. <laughs> I am innocent. It's uh, hard, dude. No, it's hard, I gotta, but I think I gotta go poltergeist. I, no, that's where I was gonna go. I, I, I mean, I, I think I, I think it's so ballsy that Spielberg says I can create the ultimate haunted house uh, movie, and then he fucking you does mean, it. Do you mean Toby Toby Hooper? No, Steven Spielberg <laughs> wrote it. Well, no, that's what I'm saying because the no, argument but, of but who Spielberg, actually directed it. Spielberg was the one that said I want it to make the ultimate haunted house movie and, and yeah. he did he wrote the fucking script he got and then yeah obviously toby hooper does an incredible job and that it's actually there's a point of contention here because some people will like well it's a spielberg movie and then no 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 no, it's right. a hooper movie i personally feel like it's a combo of both but i definitely feel more of spielberg in the movie uh than hooper uh specifically when the ghost guardian thing is walking down the steps and like the way the cameras move up and it's like this very majestic thing. It's very Spielberg. I, I, even when the creature comes out, uh, you know, to face them, it's very Spielberg, but nonetheless, Toby Hooper definitely knows how to capture all of it together on film. Dude, for me, poltergeist, I feel like it, like it was the Michael Jordan of, uh, of, of, of ghost movies. Yeah. Like, I totally it. agree with that. That's a really good way to put it. I think that, like, honestly, with Poltergeist, like, I feel like the people under the stairs could easily make my top 10 horror movies of all time that's, list. That's incredible. But I feel like Poltergeist should make anybody's top 10 horror movies of all time list. Yeah. So that's the only reason I give it to Poltergeist is, like, I love people under the stairs. The mood of that movie, mom and dad, they're so fucking scary. The Wes Craven touch on that. Ving Rhames, like, all the, like, people the under the stairs is like how they fucking that's that's how you do movies that that have a message right yeah. like the people under the stairs kind of like yeah. just like with romero with uh night of the living dead like you want to send a message through a movie you do it through the back door you don't walk in and slap someone in the face and go put more women in it you you do what they with movies like people under the stairs but there was nothing wrong about with that classism statement. there's nothing wrong like with that, that statement that you just said before that put more what? women in it Put more women. <laughs> Either way, yeah. But like, yeah, you know, like yeah. you know, I just think that like it was a beautiful movie. It was a beautiful commentary on like the social economic world that we were living at the time. But it was also fun as fuck. It was dark. It was twisted. It's one of those movies yeah. that feels like it has a twisted layer beneath it that they're not even showing you. You know what I'm saying? So I love the people under the stairs. But Poltergeist is just a fucking. It's a well-oiled fucking Ferrari of a mo yeah, uh, dude, horror movie, I mean, man. From Poltergeist, you got um, you got paranormal activity. You got uh insidious you got conjuring you got all that shit from poltergeist in my opinion mm -hmm. i mean like i said the michael jordan of the ghost movies genre yeah. but the people under the stairs you're right it has a great social commentary in it uh that you know it's not overdone you know what i mean like you don't have yeah. to be you're not like and it's not like beating you over the brow with it and be like do you fuck a thing it's class warfare, obviously, <laughs> but I, but I, it's done in such a way that, um, that you really enjoy the movie, uh, like as it is just as a horror movie, but that you get, as you get older, you're like, I get it. Uh, I get what they were going for. And, and dude, the villains in the movie are so fucking good. Yeah, man. And, and people on the stairs, the brother and sister that fuck, I can't believe they fuck. Maybe no, they don't. Nasty. I don't know. Y'all should stop doing that. I like, Unless I remember the part where the, up. where the red hair, crazy uh, bitch, she's like, she throws the girl on the hot scolding tub. She's like, "The fires of hell are hotter." They're so scary, dude. And then, the, and then the dad, and the dad's like, "I'm gonna find you." <laughs> and like he, and he's like, "I got a BDSM uniform on," and he's running through the house with a shotgun. It's so fucking surreal, yeah. dude. They're but I fucking think that the, the biggest scary. thing that stands out for me, the people under the stairs has a stronger opening, in my opinion, because it's a member. It's full sister reading the tarot card to him and the burning yeah. candle i feel like that's such like it pulls you in like a nighttime story like they're telling a ghost story or something mm -hmm. poltergeist has a great soundtrack by the way too and that yeah. definitely gets you there but 
Something I like- also think people forget that Wes Craven did the people under the stairs too. Yeah. Like it's not just Nightmare on Elm Street and Scream. This motherfucker made people under the stairs. He made fucking Last House on the Left. He made fucking The Hills Have Eyes. Like that dude, banger after fucking banger yeah. with some turds in between. But you can't win them all, Steve. You know. But uh, poltergeist you skid marks in your underwear. I mean, you <laughs> it's, it happens to the best of us. I come home after 30 years of, of loyal marriage, <laughs> one tiny skid mark in my underwear, and she calls a divorce attorney. You think World War Three started, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chester? Oh, fuck. oh, this one's gonna hurt your crack, Jay. It's gonna I hurt your crack. No, it, it, don't, it don't hurt that bad. It I know a, your answer, but yeah, it only kind of brushed it. I mean, 80s. I went back in time. Come on. <laughs> On the 80s side, we got Back to the Future, yeah. Robert Zemeckis film. And then on the 90s side, we have another Steven Spielberg classic, Jurassic Park. I mean, come yeah. on, guys. I mean, the flux capacitor, the fucking sexy decked out DeLorean, the Marty McFly played by the the glorious the glorious uh, Michael J. Fox, as well as Christopher Lloyd playing Doc Brown, as also the Leah Thompson playing a hot-ass mom. If you want to get some MILF action, okay. And yeah, you got but not your Beth own Cannon. mom. I don't We're... want to fuck my real mom, but goddamn, in fuck the him. movie, Leah Thompson is a hot piece of ash. Uh, <laughs> I, Back to the Future is everything a time travel movie should be. It's silly. It's fun. It's easy. You know what I mean? Like, it's an easy story to follow. They don't try to do the this overcomplicated interstellar type of shit. Well, there's a fourth dimension and you got to do all this stuff and you got to touch True. some bookshelves. Yeah, that's a and good like, point. There's a rubber band that holds the galaxies together and you got to hit Ash it. and Kutcher's <laughs> life's going to get ruined yeah. no matter what you, you do. You got to hit the rubber band and then knock a book over and then maybe she might remember you. In the, Matthew McConaughey's going to cry. Yeah, it's like you don't have to overthink it. They're like, you get a car. When this baby hits 88 miles an hour, you're going to see some serious <laughs> shit. That's it. That's, that's so it. true, though. Yeah, and and so I was true. like, dude, that's, and I love to do, like, it, it's back to the future all day long. Jurassic Park is classic for obvious reasons. It's an amazing thing. Never thought I'd, and it, it, it was actually one of the first movies in theater. I remember I spilled all my hot tamales when the Velociraptors <laughs> was eating that dude because it was so violent. At the very beginning of the movie, when the Velociraptors get loose and they start eating the worker that's trying to feed them, and he's like being eaten alive. I had a yeah. box of hot tamales, and I remember I lost control of my muscles in my hands, and they just started dumping all over the theater floor. <laughs> and my uncle that was with me was like, "God damn, Jesus!" And like he picked it up, and but it was go, it was rolling everywhere. But every that whole theater was quiet. But Back to the Future, man, come on, man, great soundtrack, great cast, great concept. You can't, it's dude, it's legend, it's legend. I, look, if, if I'll tell you this. And again, the way I vote on these, when I look at them, I'm thinking if I had to delete one of these from history, which one would it be? And for your sake, if I actually had that power for your sake, just because I know how much you love Back to the Future, I would pick Back to the Future for sure. Uh, On this case, though, I will put it to a vote to the audience because like, I don't know which one I enjoy watching now more. Like I enjoy them both equally. But I will say Jurassic Park, man, for me growing up, I never had like an obsession with Back to the Future growing up. Mm -hmm. Like I never caught the wind of it while it was happening. I caught it afterwards as an adult. And I was like, no, that shit is great. Other than the coolness of like Michael J. Fox, you know, like he was the coolest fucking dude ever. But like Jurassic Park, dude, like I I remember every single they marketed the shit out of that so much that every time I went to the movies as a kid in the 90s, those posters were everywhere. And it was like, that looks too scary for me. You know, like it was like it looked dark. Like, look at that. The blackness and the darkness and the simplicity of that poster freaked me out. And also, dude, like no movie has done what Jurassic Park did. Like, in my opinion, no fucking movie has done that with the CG, the way they made the dinosaurs. Still to this day, everybody talks about T2. Right. And rightfully so. But nobody talks about Jurassic Park. That movie looks better than Jurassic World, than Fallen Kingdom, than any of the shit they try to do today. Nobody can do what fucking Jurassic Park did. Uh, So I will say Jurassic Park for the sake of this, just because I think it's going to be a good vote. But uh, if it were real life, honey, I would would pick Back to the Future for you. Mike likes to argue with dad. I, <laughs> I just don't appreciate that. As far as the last vote goes, though, Demolition Man beats Tango and Cash 57 mm. to 43 percent, given the 90s yet another. Damn, man. I, 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 I actually didn't think you guys would do that. What the fuck? But then again, it's fine. I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm putting he right doesn't now, know how the three seashells work. <laughs> I mean, I get it. how that can be confusing. 
I'm putting it to a vote right now. Back to the Future Jurassic Park. So you guys let us know who wins that one. In the fucking meantime. Happy in the meantime. Lit is an underrated band. On the 80s side, you got John Carpenter's They Live. A socio, again, commentary on the world. So and on the 90s side, another commentary on the world. Paul Verhoeven's Starship Motherfucking Troopers. Tell me this isn't a good one. This is a fucking good one. Well, it's a good one. But, I mean, I feel like They Live just beat the fuck out of it it's like hulk hogan going against oh, like, under the giant i mean it's, not an, easy win. it's not an we easy disagree. win but the goddamn body slam is gonna win dude they you suck your beer down and shut your mouth and let your better talk that here. is a sam's club dive coke rc cola <laughs> uh, <laughs> they live to me is exceptional on multiple levels first off i think it no a hell comes to frog town was uh, piper's first movie but i feel like they live is the first time that roddy rowdy piper comes into his own as an actor and not only is it entertaining you have that 55 minute fight scene in the alleyway between him and uh uh the dude from uh spawn i, I can't uh michael jai the, white's in this <laughs> no um the, the voice of spawn in the animated series yeah, I, I can't think of his fucking name. What either. the fuck? I'm stupid. Okay, you guys know who we're talking about, though. John G. Jorgensen. Yeah, John G. Jorgensen. Joe John. Joe John. Uh, it, but not only that, but yeah, you're right. It has a great um, political message about corporate, the corporate world telling you what to buy. What Keith, David. Keith David. Keith David. Keith yeah, David. Yeah, Keith David. Uh, all, amazing scene. Uh, you, yeah, but the the political message. When when Roddy Rowdy Piper puts the, the 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 glasses on and the aliens have already invaded us, right? You have like obey, you know, eat, spend money, like 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 it's so. It it really is so smart because what it's saying is like you dumb shits are so fucking enamored with materialistic things, like these aliens can invade us, right? And just tell you. The 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 uh, the standard is still available, and you will just go out and consume like sheep, like like fucking sheep. And uh, man, for me, and and also, uh, dude, you get the classic line, the Duke Nukem style lines, the lines that Bruce That's Campbell from Ash fucking copied to make the character of Ash be so badass, like chew bubble gum or kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Like you have so many fucking the one-liners that are that are presented in this movie that are that have been copied and pasted on like doom uh ash williams all that stuff dude it's they live starship troopers is fun and i get the whole corporate side like believe in the country and go to war because we said so i get that and be over Stuck the top. Our dicks, Greg. yeah but i mean there's something about they live that's smarter it's more subtle if, and it just feels more sexy if i could fight you harder than i could suck you i would i would say the, the one i would fight you the hardest on would probably be this one i think it's starship troopers day in day out but that being said i think they live a win on the audience vote. i do think they live a win but in my opinion they live as the perfect like uh uh clusterfuck of john carpenter like john carpenter is the epitome of a lazy genius like that man is a fucking genius. Like Take he your has fucking lips and shove them. He, on ha he has it all. I love him. I do. I, well, I love his work. I do. But like they live is the perfect microcosm of him. That movie is such a cool idea. Everything you just said, so fucking true. All of that's true. Like, and, and it's such a beautiful idea. And he mixes, I like it when they mix the sex and the violence. I like it. it was no, but like the way that they mix the badass. Ryder Ryder Piper and like Keith David and and the cool and the fun shit with the commentary in the first half of that movie is fucking amazing. Uh and like nobody else could do it. Nobody could do it though. No one. Uh but yeah. like you sound but like, the, you sound like a foreign you sound like a foreign like <laughs> mafia family member nobody. coming to the Italianos like nobody yeah. could do it like you do it. Nobody I, make a mid I just want to like know you. if my shipment's going to be protected. <laughs> you put, I sleep you with fish, yes. If it's not protected, um, I know you have some problems in the Brooklyn area. Come over, I do cocaine off your wife's tits. <laughs> uh I just but like it falls apart, man. Like that third act, it was it's it's the classic John yeah, Carpenter. Like, I don't fucking know. Let's yeah. just fucking do whatever. Starship Troopers, on the other hand, there's just there's nothing like well, there's nothing like either of these movies, to be honest. But like 
Starship Troopers, I just think it's weird. It's out there. It's fucking, it's a whole new world. And it's just, Master it's, it's, Damn. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's hard to fucking argue for that for sure, but it's sexy as fuck, right? Uh, it's hot as shit, Dizzy, Titties, Denise Richards, all that. You had a whole Battlestar Galactica world they built, and then you got the scariness of those fucking giant insect monsters, yeah. and then they built that whole thing with Michael Ironside and the, and the school. He built a whole new world with that movie, and it's just, for me, it's just like RoboCop, as like smart as it's made. So I will go Starship Troopers, but that's a good vote. It's a tough one. I think yeah, I did a good well, job picking this one. I did. I mean, no, I, I would agree. I feel like what ruined Starship Troopers is the sequels. For sure, yeah, that's a good I feel like like I never even watched them. I, yeah, I, like that movie should never have had, like ever had sequels ever, ever, ever. It was perfect the way that it was. Never, ever, never, ever. In the case Simon of the last Jackson. one, I am for real. Sometimes I come over to what's the um, because <laughs> you know, John Winston is like, sometimes I go to John Winston's neighbor's house because <laughs> he said he saw that dude. Uh, anyway, in the case of the last one. Back to the Future beat Jurassic Park 59 to 41 percent. Congratulations, well, we're Jay. Going, we don't need roads. Congratulations we to know. the 80s. We already knew what was going to happen because we went to the future and saw it. Well, Dummy. I still believe. Um, But I'll put this one to a vote. They live or Starship Poopers. No, oh, I should put I should spell it right. Well, so gassy. I have you tried go. the volcano menu? Yeah, dude, I did today. What do you think? I liked it. You gotta go take a dump right now, don't you? No. <laughs> did you get the jalapenos on it? Dude, that's the smartest thing. I did not know you that's, could do that. At Taco Bell. Yeah, dude, it's fifty cents extra, which is Game fucking changer. stupid. But I, I put the, I put. Uh, okay, so they have the new volcano menu from Taco yeah. Bell, which is like a the the hot stuff. It's like a double meat burrito and like um, a hot yeah. spicy taco with the lava sauce on both. So much double meat, double meat, double, 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 double me meat. You had me at meat. Yeah. Me at so meat. Um, you can add jalapenos to it, right? Which is like 50 cents extra, which is bullshit, but it is what it is. Um, I added jalapeno, dude, and then I got the Diablo sauce. It was fucking spicy, dude. I like that. That was some good shit I right didn't, there. I didn't find it to be spicy personally, but I did think well, it was Well, I was in a mood. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it, it, like they brought it back. The problem is, dude, the taco was really fucking good with the volcano sauce in there. Yeah. Well, no, you're right, though. With the jalapenos, it is spicy because the yeah. jalapenos are surprisingly fresh uh, for taco. Did you get on the burrito? The burrito, dude. My, the burrito no, I did got you was get fucking... the Did you get the jalapenos on the burrito? I did, but it was fucking 50% rice, so it was ass. Yeah, it tastes true. like shit. What I did today was I went and I just got the gordita box, but I got mm. the volcano sauce on the side, and I just dipped my fucking gordita and shit, in the, sure and it was a perfect situation. The volcano sauce is good. I wonder, what do they oh, have in that? I wonder what the ingredients is. I'll it's bet probably it's just like, like cayenne and mayonnaise, just like everybody dude, can, else. Imagine this, dude. If, if Taco Bell actually said we have a volcano menu, and they just offered habaneros, yeah, like habaneros just, are fucking hot, dude. Like they're yeah, fucking that'll fuck hot. you up, man. That and that mixed with the shitty quality of the food, you will be. Don't no, you imagine? You're like, I, I, can I get habaneros on my burrito, and then you have the Diablo sauce? You'd be fucked. Your asshole will be on fire for a while. Be dead ass fucked in the butt. No returning. Do you would say you, you gotta go pee? Would you? Yeah, I'm gonna go in a second. Would you actually do if Taco Bell committed? Would you actually do a uh, a ghost pepper? Fuck if they're yeah, like, we're gonna actually shit. not cook down. We're gonna Tomorrow. actually put fucking ghost peppers. Ghost peppers uncooked on the fucking today. Thing. I would do that shit today. No, you wouldn't. You're a fucking liar, dude. Well, I've done ghost pepper. I've done straight ghost peppers. I'm no, you would do a ghost food. pepper like they're not cooked. It's fresh. Right. I've done that. I've already done that before. It sucks, but I'll do it again. Nothing's worse than that fucking <laughs> shit, dude. Dude, I know. You I'll do it right fucking now. Being butt naked, dude. That's the fe- that's the best story I've ever heard in my life. I'll be that. True fucking story, too. <laughs> true goddamn story. All right, JLB. Hey, hey, wait. Ah, fuck. Can you hear me? Jay. God damn you piece of shit. I don't know where he left off in the fucking. What a dick ball. What a dick ball. Austin said, Jay, you know, I like to stay up late. And watch stuff. Makes a sad mess. You up. I've been on that lately. I have a strong recommendation. Dance with the devil by mortal technique. Never even fucking heard of that. That sounds like a weird. And I think Jay already read that. Um, but I was, that's what I was trying to ask. I was like, where were you in the case of seven dudes at 
a subway restaurant trying to get fucked. I don't know. I don't know. We'll never know. But if that's the case, you guys watch The Sun on Netflix. Cry your fucking ass off. Promise. Hugh Jackman. Make you fucking cry. Dan Murphy, the fourth stock picture on your screen, Mike, is the girl in pink and the yellow thing is Jace. Oh, hang on. Let me pull it up for you. Um, well, I, this will be a hint at the next one, by the way, because I already, I already got it pulled up. But uh, the fourth stock picture on your screen, Mike, is the girl in pink and the yellow thing is J. Mike is the girl in pink and the yellow thing is Jay's undie, he, undie wears. Mike drinking bush lattes now. You strike me as a red dog beer drinker or 40 ounce natty <laughs> I don't know. I feel offended. The fourth picture down, this chick is fucking, she is hugging the corn now. Like she is, she is like, God, man, get you a girl who loves your dick as much as that girl loves that fucking pastry. I just, I want to rub it. I just, what are you, I'm bad. I'm bad. I fucking, <laughs> what do I do to my sale? I rip it apart. Oh shit. I don't know what's going on here, but it is strangely attractive and, and this is her afterwards, when you when you only last for like four minutes. It was fine. And then I thought I was gonna, but when she's on Molly, she's loving it. Oh, where were we? What's going on? You know, Dan. And and, and speaking of beers, um, I'll drink any. I like. I, I just I love the taste of beers. I'll, I'll drink just about anything as long as it doesn't give me a hangover. And Budweiser can't do that. Natty Light, I do not do lighting light. Natty Light will fucking ruin the next day for sure. Uh, Yingling Ultra Light, been doing those. Those are pretty good. But yeah, Bush Lattes, man, I'm on board. My buddy Mike White and 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 friends have been into that shit, and I'm on it. I'm inside. Let's turn off this banner now. I think the banner's had its time. You guys have read it sixteen thousand fucking times at this point, right? We don't need to read it anymore. We don't need to read it anymore. We're all men and women. You know, let's just get together and. Fucking feel around. Joe Valentine says, why hasn't Pumpkinhead got a proper reboot without CGI BS? Well, the rumor was, and we talked about it in a live stream many moons ago because Jay and I have been doing this for fucking way too long. Um, And I, I don't mean that because I love doing it every single night with all my heart and farts. But yeah, they were going to make a new Pumpkinhead and we were like, cool. But if you do it CGI, you can fuck all the way off. I don't even care. Don't even miss me with that shit if you oh my try god dimitri we must in soon dimitri. what'd you do we are almost to the promised land of pumpkin fuck jim we are almost there i'm not even gonna go pee i'm not even gonna do it because we're so close hmm. we're so close to finishing we're gonna make it well Steve. then i'm gonna take this hat off fuck it show us your crown <laughs> you gotta, you do, when you pet it like that it moves in a weird way it looks like a turtle bring him before the kingdom <laughs> And that's that's his like his face. Dogma said, I gotta say, even though I wasn't alive in the 80s or 90s, my opinion, I think the 90s is a better decade, especially with video games like Doom. We'll say you, you old bastard. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I agree. I think the 90s was, uh, I mean, yeah, the 90s definitely gave better, I don't know, man. Head. that's that's strong that's a strong take i don't know i'm 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 full on dude i agree 90s i'm a 90s kid all the way like yeah i feel like i'm gonna i'm gonna sell you like uh, safe light repair safe, safe light, light replace, replace. I, I, I don't i don't know but I, I i feel like the 80s is like you, you, you can't dismiss no, definitely you can't dismiss it for sure. It's a great time, and that's why it's such a fun argument for sure. But yeah, I'm a '90s dude. Uh, hey, Dogma says you look like a young Mark Hamill. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a hot bartender that just got hit on by a 45 year old. No, man. man. <laughs> Thank you. That goddamn fucking Ray came to my planet when I was like sucking on some blue tit milk Appreciate and asked me it. to help her like fucking start the force up again. I said, "Fuck that." <laughs> I'm retired. It's too far. Oh, shit. In the case of our last vote, They Live or Starship Troopers, you guys heavily agree that They Live win 73% to 27% of gotcha. the Starship Troopers. And I would just say to you that you guys should watch Starship Troopers because clearly you haven't seen it and you don't know what you're doing. Uh, also, I quit. Your feelings betray you. I'm leaving. Your feelings betray you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm kidding, obviously. But, all right, going right through it, back into it. 
quick to the point, to the point, no bacon. Cooking them seeds like a pound of bacon, burning them quick and nimble. I get crazy when I hear a symbol in a hi hat. What? To 80s Top Gun, 90s Twister. <laughs> The 80s had no good fucking the, the 80s had no good disaster movies, you guys. So this I know this is a weird mix, but they're both event movies, so I felt like it it fared well enough. Tough, tough pick, tough pick, Joe. Jowl, Joel, Jerry. Ah, <laughs> you look like a dad shit. who just found out his son was gonna go it's like uh, I know he's gonna be a Horrible. professional poker player instead of going with this degree. <laughs> yeah, I didn't make my fucking pair and you called me on an ace high, you son of a bitch. I feel like Phil held you. I'm gonna ah, bitch him. piss on it. I'm gonna pit, I'm gonna bitch about the final play. Uh well, you never go you, you raised me. You raised me after I raised you and I was showing an ace. That's that reminds me of uh, uh uh what's the movie um oh uh, I love you man where, where those dudes are doing the beer chug and the dude runs up and Paul Rudd runs up he's like all right guys say it one two three Beatles or Stones one two three Stones and the one guy just goes shut the fuck up <laughs> well I, man they're both amazing right but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give my my vote cast to Top Gun Twister no nope. fuck I, I can't do fuck it man. you. Not okay. Listen, you had the badass '80s soundtrack, right? The soundtrack alone is fucking incredible for Top Gun. Top Gun, if it was just based on soundtracks alone, would be an all timer. But it had a great story too. You had this cocky, arrogant asshole uh, in Maverick, and then he goes up against an equal that's even more cockier and shittier than him. And I spent. It's like I'm describing how me and Mike met. <laughs> and then they become friends later on and then Maverick loses his best friend Goose and then he has to overcome the PTSD of that and then you know it, like dude the, it's just so fucking badass and cool it really is cool in Twister it's great because we get to see what the inside of a tornado looks like when Dorothy gets up in that crack but as far as storytelling, as far as dynamic, as far as like action, as far as like how it's told, man, come on. Top Gun is like, it's fucking Top Gun. It's top for a reason. It's Top Gun. I could not disagree more if I had to. I got, of course. Gun to my head. I'm not doing it on purpose. Steve. Yeah, dude, no, it's Twister all day and twice on Sundays for me. I, I, it's it's one of the fucking greatest experiences I've ever had in a movie theater. Watching, like, we never saw anything like it. Like, oh, we never fucking saw weather portrayed on film like we did in Twister and Bill Paxton leading it. And they, the character work they did with him was so great. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, just all, everything about that movie. And he was a leading most, man, which is awesome. Yeah, and it was one of the most rewatchable movies of all time. And John Dubont, and that that fucking soundtrack was pretty good too, with Van Halen and shit, you know. Um, yeah, but like, like, yeah, but there's, it's another it's another movie on this list. And again, we keep going back to this with these '80s and '90s movies. Uh, a movie with special effects that, to this day, they may be a little bit dated for Twister for sure. But I can't name another uh, another tornado movie that does it better. You know what I mean? That shows the Twisters better. The end yeah. was it stupid as hell? Yeah, for sure. It was like uh, unbelievable. Like a, a belt, a fucking belt stopped me from being on the inside of an F5 tornado. Come the yeah. fuck on, Jim. I get that. But dude, just one of the it's an event movie. It's a summer movie. It's so rewatchable. It's a fucking all time. It also had like me. one of the coolest dude. It, it, like, and it was fucking scary. Remember at the nighttime sequence? When they're at the drive-in and mm -hmm. the, the Shining is playing, Shining, which is yeah. a, and then the Twister comes through it, that's yeah. fucking. Right when Jack Nicholson is popping through the the doorway, be like, "Where's my IRS tax return?" <laughs> I mean, here's Johnny is what he said. Yeah, uh, that shit was fucking gnarly, dude. But yeah, I, I still gotta give it to Top Gun, man, because I never seen anything like Top Gun. Was it, it's weird though because Top Gun. Um, I, my Twisters. uncle, my uncle, who was like, um, I don't know. I think Top Gun came out in eighty six or eighty seven. I don't know. My uncle was like sixteen or seventeen years old. Uh, he said he he was like that was a chick flick. Like that's like the consensus, I guess, for a lot of people was it was a chick flick because they had "Take My Breath Away" 
by the way, the soundtrack in Top Gun's incredible. But they had like the Take My Breath Away where he's like, it's all romantical and shit. And then Days of Thunder is considered more of a dude movie. I guess mm-hmm. Twister would be, you know, Mike's a misogynist, obviously. So yeah, definitely. I hate women, and that's why yeah. I like tornadoes. Yeah. So obviously, as a hundred percent, he's gonna go with Twister. <laughs> yeah. so, by the way, I look like I just got done like printing, or not printing, but like helping rewrite the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> well, it is the Fourth of July. I mean, you're I know. Invested, like you know? am I like look at the split, and then it goes yeah. like here. Yeah, it was a you know I don't I, what what was the hat like eating at you? Was it like was it it's like grinding in my I, fucking... no, I get I get headaches. Oh okay, so yeah, a, I was thinking that... of like a uh, Ace Ventura. He's like your god is a dick again. No, because my head's so fucking big, my brain is so fucking large <laughs> that it, it. No, I, I literally if I that if I wear a hat too long, I, I literally get headaches. Yeah, I think it looks good though. It looks fine right now. I mean, no, it's not looking bad. I was gonna get so, a haircut soon. Sometimes a hat can help your situation. All right, so that's up to vote right now. Uh, and we go back to the video game mm. in a console debate. Regular Nintendo or Super Nintendo? Ooh. Which fucking one? Bringing down the Thor the Mjolnir hammer. I'm going to. Look, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to. I'm going to say it. That Super Nintendo. Chicken tiki. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's Super Nintendo to me, man. Um. Like I feel like I feel like SNES like uh delivered all the promises that they were telling you about as far as like better graphics, better gameplay, uh all of that. Uh Nintendo is classic for a multitude of reasons, right? The regular NES is is a cauldra of of memories for people that grew up in the 80s experiencing video games for the first time. But Super Nintendo said fuck that shit. Let me give you some steroids and take this shit to the next level. Are you ready you. to compete at the next level? I feel like <laughs> I feel like NES was like winning at the high school track team like every year in your champion. And then when the SNES came out, it's like get, getting invited to the Olympics and you win. I mean, yeah, come on, guys. Super Nintendo had so many great fucking games. It was in way better detail. Graphics were updated updated. You had, um, um, dude, there's so many fucking games. There's so many games. Like, to me, it's it's Super Nintendo all day long. Yeah, I'm with you on Super Nintendo as well. I think that Nintendo did have the better accessories. The Duck Hunt gun was way, way more practical than the Super Scope, for sure. And, like, it was the original. You had Super, or Super Mario Bros. and all that shit like that. But, like, Super Nintendo took it up a fucking notch with the Street Fighters. With uh, I mean, it's almost unfair because like, yeah, duh, Super Nintendo is the better version of the Nintendo. But again, if I had to delete one and all its games off the map, I would be really sad about the Turtles games from Nintendo for sure. Oh, right? shit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But on Super Nintendo, there was way more shit. Like it was just better games. It's just it was it was all around better. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. We agree that Super Nintendo wins, which is another for the 90s, which puts the 90s to 15. They're getting mm. like, yeah, it's getting nice. Yeah, like it's becoming a blowout here, Jim. On the other side, Cotton, uh, in regards to Top Gun and Twister, 69 dudes, 69% for Twister wins uh, against 31% for Top Gun. What so, the fuck? Another notch in the 90s belt. Bunch of people from Kansas in this chat. They just don't like gays vol- and volleyball. That's the problem. Oh. That's, yeah, that's, I'm sorry that you problem. were intimidated by Iceman playing volleyball with Maverick, <laughs> and maybe they were looking at each other for a second. Sorry, it turns you on so you much. You guys are weird. My apologies. If if you need to, just watch this chick fucking cuddle this goddamn. I can't be. Ta- yeah, pastry. I can't think of. Let me just look at a chick cuddling. I'm, so what I, on. I'm gonna pretend to be a cock. <laughs> I'm so confused with how turned on I am. I just want donuts. Who is she? And all okay, so moving forward, the return of the living dead for the 80s, or on the 90s side, another comedy horror, Army of Darkness. By the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell this to the chat, okay? I'm gay. Shop smart, shop s smart. <laughs> it's army of fucking darkness. Shut the fuck up with your bullshit about return of the living dead. I like it, it's great. I, 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 uh, it's classic, 
But Army of Darkness, dude, brings Bruce Campbell to the forefront finally and gives him that Duke Nukem ball set that we all know and love. It sets the standard, I think, for what we all know as Ash Williams. And, uh, I mean, come on, guys. Look at the fucking cover. Like, if that's not a cover... It is one of the greatest covers of all time. Like, I will say that. I'm looking at both of them. What's playing today? Hmm. I don't have a smartphone. What's that? I see. <laughs> it looks like a mohawk asshole and a big booby Courtney Love girl that's going to fucking rob Kurt Cobain more and more. I think I'm going to go see the Fabio dude with the chainsaw hand. That's definitely a better poster. You know what? And by the way, I know he never said that, but there's definitely no way that Sam Raimi wasn't going for like the original Star Wars poster. I think Army more like Fabio one. type shit. Like Fabio. No, but like novel. in the original Star Wars poster, it's like Luke Skywalker holding up the, yeah. the, the lightsaber and then like his sister, which is weird because you didn't like holding his leg like really close to his crotch. <laughs> and she's like, oh, and then you have all that shit going. That looks very much like a Star Wars poster, but it draws your eye. By the way, it's obviously corny and cheesy and the effects are terrible. But I feel like it's done on purpose. And it, it really is a very charming movie. And uh, and it really does establish the Ash Williams that everyone knows and loves. Return of the Living Dad, I think is great. I think part two is better. I don't think it's a question for me. It's it's Army of Darkness. But I know that Mike's going to opposite me you, as he it's does. Not, bitch, it's not on purpose. I just, All you, the time. You, you know. you I, it Actually, made me laugh really hard when I put this up. Because, like, you know it's a good one. People in the chat get mad. Because I saw some guy, like, some random was like, God damn it. Why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> like, when people actually get mad about the yeah, choice. like oh, really we did, Yeah, good, good we, job. We did good on that one. But, no, I think that, like. I love Army of Darkness, but I've always felt it was it was uh, inferior to the Evil Dead movies and what came before. It's great. I love that it exists. Return of the Living Dead is my favorite zombie movie. So, yes, you're right. I'm going to pick Return of the Living Dead. What it's a piece of shit. It's fucking <laughs> maybe the greatest punk horror mashup of all time. And as it's one of it's my favorite zombie movie of all time. It's funny. It's got an amazing fucking soundtrack with the cramps and fucking everybody else on it. I love Army of Darkness for what it is, but it would be a super easy choice for me. So I put it to a vote, but we will scoot, scoot, scooty poot. That's it. That's it. Hey, we fucking the end. did it, y'all. That's the end of the row. By the way, I will say no, and I know you're not going to tell me the truth. I'm gay. No, I got to stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. It's over. You love the lick joke's been had. Toes. I know, but here's the thing. It sounds like a blink song. You love to be, I know. Work sucks. I you know. love to lick men's toes. Lick I know. Uh, toes. Here's the thing. There's no way that you rent it, Return of the Living Dead, over Army of Darkness. There's no I way. I would have. I no, because you, yeah, you went to Blockbuster. I didn't know about Return of the Living Dead. Oh, see, if you... If you found it I on came TNT to it after rentals were gone, no, that's bullshit, dude. Because I, you probably broke the tape. I fucking rented Army of Darkness a shit ton because I didn't own the movie. Well, that was you. <laughs> you I'm did, not you, Dad. You did, you did not rent. I don't movie. want your life. <laughs> <laughs> so that fucking pig skin. <laughs> you did win in the eyes of the audience, though. They do agree with you because in the case of Army of Darkness versus Return of the Living Dead. Uh, it wins. Oh fuck! I lost it. I Army of like, Darkness uh, wins sixty-five to thirty-four percent. So overwhelmingly, I feel like Bruce Campbell in there or nineties. He's selling a lot of dick cheese. <laughs> he's just got a lot of accounts. Yeah, he's like, yeah, you're not gonna, fucking... you're not gonna tell me, you're not gonna tell me that a bunch of fucking posers of George Romero's <laughs> original is gonna beat my classic with Sam Raimi. Are you stupid? It's fucking Samuel L. Jackson and Dyer Withers. Don't fuck with me if I'll shove a lightning bolt on hey, your ass. Imagine if they say if they remade Not a Living here. Dead and they they put Sam Jackson as 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 Jones. I I don't know. I don't I'd think his name. It. I don't want you to say the black guy that was in the fucking house. Oh, court. Yeah, court. Great, Jay. Real great. Real great. Well, no, I don't remember his fucking name. Three hours and eighteen minutes in, and you're gonna do this fucking now. <laughs> I'm sorry. The black guy that was in what? His color was black in the in the original Night of the Living Dead and the remake. It was a black dude. I don't remember the character's name, 
But I was like, it would be funny <laughs> if they cast Samuel L. Jackson in a re-remake of Not the Living Dead as the black dude that was in the mansion. For right. it helps the lily white girl that dies or is annoying. I thought it would be funny. <laughs> Your face trying to read the chat. Like, no, what? I don't even know what the fucking chat's saying because my <laughs> eyes went blur with the stupidity <laughs> of the fact that that shit could be construed or misconstrued as something that'd be racial. You dumb shits. Uh, uh, not here. Not here. We would have been canceled. No, I know. I, I'm kidding anyway. Uh, but I, no, I mean, I, I think if they ever did do a, which they never should, if they ever did remake Not the Living Dead, I think the 1990 Not the Living Dead is perfect. But if they ever did remake it, Sam Jackson would be a great. Uh, cast, casting choice. Yeah, yeah, you can't go wrong. And it's really what parts are you gonna play, Jay? <laughs> what black parts dude, are you gonna play? I was black, like, black I don't know. Ordering <laughs> bagel. I, I, a key grip. Seed one. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even have a name. He's just black dude ordering no, bagel. I think his name. What I, the I know fuck? I don't, know. I don't remember that guy's name. I don't remember uh, the black dude's name. Ben. Uh, ben. 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 That's what I said. I said Ben. Ben. Yeah, you said it. From the beginning. I said Ben. I said Ben like ten minutes ago. Everyone just misheard you. Yeah, Ben was great. That's you know problem. what? I thought his name was Jones. That would have been perfect. Yeah, Ben Jones. No, I no. I thought his ben name Jones was Soda. Jones. Like, Jones Soda. It'd been better if he just. Said, I don't have a first name. I have a last name because I don't want to <laughs> get to get. I don't really want to get to know you. Our you first. Might die. Our first night of this show, which will be an ongoing show, because I think it's pretty fucking fun. The nineties. Like DX, fucking suck it. Clean fucking house. 18 to 7. The 90s wins the vote tonight. We'll Ooh. see what happens the next time. Hey, I can't wait for the 80s old fuckers to come up here and be like, God damn whippersnappers. What the fuck? You're God. God. Comment down below on the actual video itself what you would like to see go against each other. It could be toys. It could be music. It could be fucking whatever. And maybe we'll use some of those. Uh, comment down below what you'd like to see go against each other for the next show. And, uh, hey, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I got Allman Brothers tickets. Yeah. Man, what a great fucking show. Thank you guys for showing up tonight in, in force. Thank you guys for all your comments and, and your interaction. Uh, we really appreciate it. I really definitely knew this tonight. It was, it was a really good time hanging out with you guys. So appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Thank you guys. And more to come. 80s versus 90s. There's a fucking plethora. There's a book. There's a Harry Potter sized fucking book of shit we can go through and have more Tons. to give you guys. But thank you guys for, for sure. And I, I saw I saw uh, a couple of people say, uh, I know we got to that. So I got to the last. I saw uh, uh, somebody say that we missed the super chat. Email me. I'll put it, I'll put it in the thing right now. If we did miss one, um, I will make sure that we open up the next show with it. So if we did miss miss one, let me know. I'll put the email down there right now. And uh, what Jay said, thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. We love you. See you guys. Good night, Steve. You left quicker than I thought. I am many leather bound books and my apartment smells of mahogany. And also I read at a song.